So welcome friends how are you all what if Naruto and Hinata's paths change forever? The Chunin exams were upon them and Jiraiya of the legendary Sanin had taken to a young boy named Uzumaki Naruto after Naruto, having no idea who this shinobi was boldly and confidently stood up to him in trying to preserve the honor of the women in the women's bathhouse. What Uzumaki did not realize was that this lecherous old man in red with the white hair was actually his secret godfather. With the Hokage's permission Naruto was taken away from the village for what was meant to be a month of intense training as Naruto's sensei was busy training his brooding teammate and rival, Uchiha Sasuke. His substitute sensei turned out to respect this, Lord Jiraiya, so much that Naruto all but insisted to be trained by him. Jiraiya agreed, and took Naruto far away from the village as is he knew about his inner prisoner and did not want to chance that prisoner being freed and wreaking havoc upon a non-suspecting Konoha. Naruto learned a lot of things from the old pervert in his time with him, but it was not to turn out as a happy family reunion as they were attacked three weeks into journey by Didera, Kakuzu, Sasori, and in some other immortal bastard whose name Naruto hadn't caught. By the end of the battle, Sasori and Didera were dead and their compatriots in retreat. Jiraiya lay dying on the hot green grass with blood gushing out with Naruto doing everything he could to try to save his new sensei's life, but to no avail. Panicking and even crying from the old man being willing to put everything on the line to protect him. A mere genin, but tearing the jacket from his back, placing pressure on his stomach where a scythe had just been embedded moments earlier. Jiraiya gripped the boy's hand and shook his head as he looked up at the blue sky with a smile, then looked at his godson and reluctantly said, Naruto, don't weep over me. You don't know this, but you were never alone. I might not have been able to stay in the village as much as I would have liked, but I have always watched over you. I am sorry I could not protect you from the pain of what people think you are. Remember these words well Uzumaki Naruto. You are its container, but you are not the Kayubi no Yoko. Naruto nods his head quickly and tried to assure the old man that he understood. He knew the old man's time in this world was coming to an end. If old man hears and heard me say what I am about to say, he would kill me and not wait for the grim reaper to do his dirty deed. Him being my sensei not being of any consequence. Your mother's name was Uzumaki Kashina, and your father was Namikaze Minato. The Yandaimi Hokage, he coughed out. Naruto didn't know what to say. He thought the old man might be in the thralls of his impending end, and this was meant for another. Jiraiya could see what the boy was thinking, and said, I have two requests. One, take my Hite Ite to Tsunade of the Sanin. She will know what, what this means. This scroll too, he says as he hands Naruto his Hite Ite, which has his Konoha 1 hidden directly behind it. Jiraiya begins trembling as he forced out, my Konoha one goes to her, she will know it's the real one, this white one is yours. Naruto then accepted three small scrolls and listened as Jiraiya gave his last order and request as his short time master. Then Jiraiya said, these scrolls hold powerful ninjutsu that I was eventually going to pass on to you, and they hold secrets to your cage bushin that you may not have realized, but it will help you to become more powerful than even I could have hoped to become, and my chakra is formidable in its own right. Only my blood can release them, so gather as much as you can. There are instructions to create a new scroll seal using your blood. Study hard. If you go back to Konoha half cocked, as I know you are likely going to be after learning these great truths, you will be locked away as the weapon you were originally meant to be. Locked away until your power is needed. Learn all you can from the scrolls before going back home and facing off against Serutobi, Sensei. He can be a scary bastard. Slightly stronger than me. Or you can leave and be branded a traitor. A missing nin who will be on the run forever. Do you understand me Gaki? No not Gaki. My precious godson Naruto. I do Jiraiya, Sama, Naruto said with surprising respect. Don't start that crap with me. I'm still now and always the super perverted Jiraiya of the Sanin. He exclaimed while his hacking grew progressively weaker. Naruto even in his tears could do nothing but allow a small grin as he said, sure thing Aero Senin. Jiraiya handed Naruto a small pouch and said, if you are hurt or you are within a hair's breadth of death, take one of these beans. They are better than soldier pills because they refill your ki which is basically the parent to your chakra, and much more potent without the negative side effects. They just might save you. There are 40 in here. Separate them, and make sure you always have some available. They are more precious than gold. And before you get any ideas, I waited to tell you about them intentionally until it was too late for me. Now that you know the truth about your parents I would have been executed the moment word got back to sensei and the council. 11-year-old Naruto bows while on his knees as he accepted the gifts. Jiraiya then indicated for Naruto to bow lower. He placed two fingers on Naruto's forehead protector, his Hite Ite, and shoved a large chakra bolt into his mind. Normally this would have killed someone, 
but this bolt was specifically made to transfer knowledge and experiences. A Kenjutsu Jutsu, a forbidden technique created and taught to him by the best medical shinobi the world had ever known, Lady Tsunade. Naruto had passed out from the influx, but soon awoke to his new friend and who he now somehow knew as his true godfather. He looked at his hands, and clenched them tightly as he swore vengeance on Himura Danzo and Sarutobi Hiruzen. The two who had insisted his ancestry be hidden from him claiming it was for his protection. Naruto gathered some blood in some of his sample vials from his friend, and then burned his body so shinobi from other lands would not learn the secrets of the one of the most powerful shinobi Konoha had ever produced, not for Konoha herself, but out of respect for his master and godfather. He had words for Hitaki Kakashi as well, but he knew that he would not be able to do much. Not against seasoned veterans of shinobi wars, especially Konoha shinobi. Naruto raced toward the trees closest to him and set up camp with whatever he could scrounge up from his surrounding. He gathered firewood and nuts and berries along with refilling his canteen with water from a nearby pond before finally settling down to begin his studies. He used a single precious drop of his sensei's blood to unlock the scroll using the same Kuchiyu's technique he had used to first summon his toad boss Gamabunta. The scroll opened, and Naruto immediately used his own blood for the instructions to seal the knowledge into scrolls linked to his blood in case he loses his master's blood for some reason. He then opens the second scroll which produces four variations to his cage bushin no jutsu which were only mildly different, but he would soon learn how different they actually were. He studied some uses for the cage bushin that he had never knew and never paid attention to such as retaining the knowledge and experiences of his cage bushin. For the next five days Naruto trained non-stop on increasing his speed, his taijutsu, his added ninjutsu arsenal, and was now using B in a class jutsu that most genin would be unable to perform without years of practice as the cage bushin allowed him time to cover years worth of training in days. Day in and day out he trained to become the shinobi his godfather knew he could. Naruto didn't know it, but he was now as powerful as most elite jonin of Konoha. The power came fast, but he was still inexperienced which concerned him. He sealed all of his scrolls, and even said good night to his prisoner who only growled back in annoyance at the small kindness. The next Naruto's clothes were shredded, but he was rested, and down to 33 of the special beans he inherited from his master. He separated them and placed them in different scrolls, and even tied a few of the smaller ones behind his hite ite via the pouch Uruka had sewn there. Naruto placed his hands in a familiar seal when he called out, Cage Bushin no Jutsu. Ten clones knew without a word what to do, they took off to the east back to Konoha as Naruto took off to the south to the last known location of Senju Tsunade Haim. Konoha royalty being the granddaughter of the Shodem, the first Hokage. Naruto traveled day in and day out through sweltering heat, violent rain, and even a freak snowstorm, but he did finally reach a casino town where she was said to be spotted. Konoha's legendary sucker. Naruto was tired, annoyed, and damn livid at what he had to go through to get to the town. He had never done a solo mission outside of the village and had purchased inaccurate maps. He found the merchant and beat him up until he surrendered a real map. He'd been slapped because he saw a woman naked as she got out of the outdoor hot springs even though it was an accident. He had to demean himself to parlor tricks to earn enough money to eat on, but kept them low-key to hide the fact that he was a truly skilled shinobi. And finally, he was jumped by a group of Takagakure shinobi. He recalled it all, and sighed. He called upon 200 cage bushin clones, and finally found Tsunade sprawled out on the table at a local bar. Once the clones dispelled he ran to the bar, and as he tried to walk over to her, a beautiful dark-haired woman immediately appeared before him. She wore a black kimono with short hair. Had this been any other time he would have just been content with staring at her gorgeous black eyes, but then remembered what he was there for before she had gotten a chance to ask. I'm here to speak with the Lady Tsunade. It's urgent, Naruto states plainly. Not wearing that you're not, and more importantly, you can't be any more than eleven or twelve. So a genin, or a very young chunin. No vest, so I am leaning toward Genin. And no Genin would be allowed out this far without a Chunin or a team of Genin if it was only a D or possibly C rank mission if you were good enough. Naruto quickly losing his patience, and his tattered clothes already a sore spot stated with an edge, I was traveling with Aero Senin, but then clarified at her slightly perplexed look, Jiraiya Shisho. The black haired beauty ducked as a bottle was thrown from behind her. Naruto easily caught it and looked directly at the blonde bombshell of a woman whose curves made him for a brief second distracted enough to wish he were a few years older. She was slightly younger than he anticipated, but then he suddenly knew about her age retardation jutsu, but was wise enough not to mention it. That's bullshit kid. Jiraiya said he would only ever possibly teach one more person when he became Jonin, and you don't look like you were Jonin. Now get out of here before I get angry. He told me you were stubborn. Fine. 
I'll prove it, Naruto yelled out, but without the normal joviality that his personality carried. He motioned to her to step outside which she did as she figured she could be amused for a few minutes and not have an extra bill for having to pay for whatever destruction she was sure was about to ensue. How about we spar? Naruto asked, already being made aware of her monstrous strength. Then adds, if I win, you go back to Konoha and beat your sensei senseless for keeping my heritage away from me. You will know who I am when you see this. And I want to know that the title of Sanin is in worthy hands before the next step in my journey. That's some ego you've got kid, and some balls too but that won't be enough to stop me. So here's the deal if I win. You give up being a shinobi, and surrender your hite ite. You obviously think you are hot shit. Back it up, and I you give it your all. I want to show a child when to stay in a child's place, she taunted, having the feeling this genin could not resist a chance to test his mettle against her. She was right. After the terms were agreed to, and the woman whom Tsunade referred to as her apprentice Shizune was told to move out of the way and to stop interfering, Naruto took off at high speed much faster than the speed he had used to evade Anbu when he performed pranks only months before. He had gotten within arm's reach, both hands began to glow blue, then spinning orbs appeared in each hand. He shot his arms straight toward her midsection while calling out. Kei's Rarisu. Da. Yuru Rasenmaru, wind release. Duel Rasengan, as he slammed in palms into what he assumed was her midsection before he realized that she had used a Kawarimi no Jutsu, substitution technique to replace herself with a log which was instantly drilled through with the power of his newly mastered technique. Tsunade had seen the jutsu, and decided to push the, gaki, to his limits and see if he were really worthy of Jiraiya's time and energy. She descended as if from upon a cloud, and Naruto had barely moved out of the way, but still felt the backlash of the kick, as the wind pushed him further back which left him off balance. As Tsunade came in for another attack Naruto had summoned two clones to catch him, and eight more to engage the, enemy, combatant. Tsunade knew that the kid was outmatched, but he was no doubt very, very good, he was panting, surprised by her raw speed, and insane power. The she asked, ready to concede kid? To her surprise, he stood taller, and entered back into his fighting stance stated, there are two things you should learn about me very quickly. 1. I never give up. 2. I never go back on my word. Ever. That is my nindo. My ninja way. I can admire that kid, but you won't be a ninja after this. She stated as she raced toward him. Naruto bit his finger, drawing the slightest bit of blood which caught Tsunade's eye, and she immediately stops, and is paralyzed by her natural fear of blood. Naruto sees that she has stopped and thanks Kami for what he perceives as her arrogance. He slams his hand to the ground and calls out, Kachiyose no Jutsu, and a giant toad the size of the tallest building in this city appears in a cloud of smoke. Shizune, and Tsunade looked at him as Naruto sat down on his, boss's, head. Gamabunta looks down at Tsunade, and then Shizune and said, Kid, if I'm being brought in to fight one of the legendary Sanin, I will personally kick your ass when this is over. Tsunade raises her hand once she has regained her composure and directs her statement to the giant toad, You may leave Gamabunta. You have my word as one of the Sanin and granddaughter of Senju Hashirama that this battle is now over. Boss. I owe you some of the best sake I can find when I can afford it, Naruto states smoothly. Free sake for just showing up. I suppose I will forgive you this time brat, Gamabunta states before disappearing in a large puff of smoke. Naruto descends and landed safely. He turned to Tsunade, not really caring if he or she had won. He said simply, my master asked me to do this one last thing for him, before he passed on. Tsunade's eyes widened, and her knees buckled underneath her when she heard the news. Shizune caught her shisho and helped her to a nearby bench. Tsunade finally gets the strength to ask, so you know, everything? Naruto simply nodded a sad nod, and looked away before turning back around, and unwrapping his makeshift pouch. He handed Tsunade Jiraiya's Hite ITE to which she pulled into an embrace, and then allowed a small smile to appear on her lips before saying, he had me holding something for him. I believe it was meant for you. He had trained under a master in what he called another world I think he may have been drunk off his ass but the results spoke for themselves. He studied under a mutant Roshi. Shizun. Go get my lock scroll. Yes my lady said as she vanished in a puff of smoke. I have got to learn how to do that, Naruto remarked leaving Tsunade speechless. You really are just a genin aren't you? she asked, still in shock over everything that had happened during the day. He simply nodded. She shook her head and said, pay attention Gaki as I am only showing you this once, understood Shinobi? His eyes widened at her acknowledgement of his status but nodded attentively. She showed him the hand seals required to perform the Shunshin no Jutsu which allowed a user's chakra to boost a person's speed to a point that it almost appears to be a form of teleportation. 
After a few tries Naruto successfully learned the technique, and had his shadow clones continue to practice it. Shizune returned, and Tsunade putting her fear of blood to the side pricked her finger and summons an orange training jumpsuit with a symbol on the back, and a smaller one on the left top part of the chest area. She handed it to Naruto who bowed and, shunshins, away. He returned after 20 minutes having found somewhere to clean himself up and was now fully dressed. Even the boots seemed to have been made just for him. Well kid, Tsunade began, looks like I'm going home for a visit. Mind if we tag along, and you can tell us everything that happened along the way. Naruto nods and they go check out of the hotel Tsunade and Shizune were staying at and began their journey back to Konoha. Konoha. Naruto found out what? Sarutobi hears and growled at the top of his lungs referring to Jiraiya being his godfather. Yes sir. And it seems as if he is bringing back Tsunade of the Sanin to put you in your place. Uruka reported what Naruto's clones had told him. Naruto's no match for Tsunade, so I am not worried about that, Hiruzen started, but then realized, who am I kidding? Naruto is the most unpredictable bastard in Konoha. Naruto pushed the limits of Tsunade's and even the more calm-minded Shizune's patience as he rushed them toward the village. Neither of them had did any major speed traveling for a long time, and Naruto's energy seemed endless. Eventually they convinced him to stop to set up camp for the night, and to tell them everything. Naruto explained from A to Z, from as far back as he could remember and the hell he had to live being persecuted for reasons he didn't know or understand. Senju Tsunade also came to the realization that she and Naruto were distantly related as Naruto was related to Mito Uzumaki. Her very grandmother. This revelation surprised both Naruto and Shizune, especially when Naruto jumped on his, Grandma Tsunade, which earned him a lump on the head. Then a genuine hug. Tsunade was now officially ready to grind Hiruzen under her foot, but they needed to rest before going on this venture. It was a very silent night surrounded by woods and even the chirping of the birds silenced from the chill brought about by the tension radiating off of the two reunited family members. It had been three additional days before that the travelers found themselves at the front gate of Konohagakir no Sato. The two guards were immediately incapacitated after having tried to take Naruto into custody, the rest of the trip to the Hokage Tower was spent in Henge. Naruto knew that this might be his only chance to say goodbye to his friends sent off some mode 2 of his cage bushin to meet up with what he called the Rookie 12. Most were in the Chunin arena battling. He sent one clone to speak to Konohamaru and to explain the type of man his grandfather and hero was. What Konohamaru had said surprised the Naruto clone. He said that he believed his grandfather had been acting strange for the last few two months and believed him to be an imposter. He thanked Konohamaru and bowed to the young academy student who he saw as his little brother before he dispelled himself and Naruto now knew that Danzo and Hiruzen were in the Hokage office. Once at the Hokage tower they released the henge, and Naruto saw the one person who he knew would understand, but was outraged when Aruka informed him that he already knew sadly, but was under orders not to tell him or it would be his death. That infuriated Naruto even more, Lady Tsunade could tell that Aruka was conflicted, and dismissed him as she did still outrank him not only as Sanin, but as a Jonin of Konoha. When Naruto eventually made it to the doors of the Hokage's office, he sensed twelve chakra signatures, well hidden, and wondered how he could tell that they were there. He looked back to Tsunade who nodded that she was a, impressed, and b, ready. Naruto kicked the door in with a power and speed that had knocked eight of his guards back, and two out of the side window as Naruto walked into the room and said simply, we need to talk old man. The darkness in his eyes told Hiruzen that there would be no peaceful resolution, and that Naruto would have to be locked away possibly even killed so that the Kyubi no Yoko could be transferred to another shinobi. One more able to be controlled. Danzo and Hiruzen didn't get along on much, but keeping Naruto from going rampant was one of those things. Been a while Tsunadeheim, he said in his normally old grandfathering voice. Tsunade at Naruto's side with her arms folded, and a very cross look on her face. Hiruzen's anger began to erupt. Seeing his chance to go with reason having faded, he began his verbal assault on Naruto, who the hell do you think you were brat? I made sure you had a roof over your head. I allowed you to become a shinobi when you asked, he yelled, trying to sound the part of Naruto's benefactor. If that were true, you would not have held back my parentage from me. I would not have been seen as a demon all these years. I am the demon's jailer. I am not the demon damn it you cock sucking son of a bitch. Naruto exploded. Danzo leapt from his chair to strike Naruto. Shizune spit out a paralysis senbon which caught him off guard as it struck him square in the side of the neck and Tsunade was on him like white on rice. He used the minor remaining movements he could muster to try to lift his bandage to reveal a Sharingan, but Tsunade smacked his right hand away, and noticed the four more on his arm being revealed as his bandages fell off. You monster! 
she exclaims before she immediately ripped his arm off his shoulder making the man scream out in agony he had never thought possible, and allowed no reaction time. Blood splattering everywhere. Shortly after Danzo had passed out from the pain, Hiruzen thought that the sacrifice was worth it as he knew of Tsunade's fear of blood, and its splattering everywhere would make her helpless as a kitten. He was mistaken. She turned around to face him, and declared, you tried to bring pain to the only blood relative I have left. That was the worst mistake of your life. Kakashi arrived and leapt through the window and stood in between the two powerhouse shinobi. He looked back, then looked at Naruto, then back again and asked, he knows. Hiruzen simply nodded, shit, was all Kakashi managed to get out. So you did know you backstabbing traitor. I started to trust you. Sarutobi Hiruzen is a traitor to the leaf. He conspired with Amora Danzo to allow me to continue being persecuted, and hardened so that I may be a weapon used, but not as a human. I'm human damn it. A hot damn human being. Konoha's constitution dictates that not even the Hokage, or the council can take away one's civil liberties. And don't look at me like that. I did pay attention in the academy despite popular belief. This lump of dog shit, he hid away my parents' identities from me. I could have at least lived a life knowing I had someone who loved me at some point. Naruto continued to rage. Enough, the Hokage demanded as he stood, slamming his fist on his desk. No I think we've had enough of you and this corrupt government council. Our bill of rights cannot be changed or modified. You broke those laws, and don't give me that bullshit about it being for the betterment of the village. It's time for a new Hokage. Naruto yelled as he took off with a burst of speed surprising everyone in the room. He was in front of Hiruzen when he let two Rasengan form quickly and explode into the old man's chest. But as he was slammed against the wall, to his surprise the old man just stood up, and the wall was not destroyed. He smiled a dark and twisted smile and said, no one outside of this room will ever know what happened here. Tsunade of the Sanin, Uzumaki Naruto, and Tsunade's adopted daughter Shizune. I sentence you all to death. Kakashi. Sensei. You always taught me that those who don't follow the rules are scum. Well, prime example right behind you. And furthermore those who abandon their comrades are worse than scum. That's two for two. What's it going to be? Naruto pleaded with all of his heart in hopes that there was some small bit of truth behind the small connection he though he felt with his sensei. Kakashi slowly turned toward Hiruzen and lifts his hite ite over his sharingan, and said, Naruto. If we get out of this alive, I am going to kick your ass. Then kick it again despite you having plenty of reason to do the same to me. Surprised, Naruto, Tsunade, and Shizune entered battle stances alongside Kakashi. And Anbu suddenly appeared in the window seal and noticed Danzo but immediately addressed Hiruzen. Lord Hokage. Orochimaru has taken your time away from from the tournament to lay siege to Konoha. He is working with the Sanagakure no Sato and was here under the guise of the K's cage, he explained quickly. So what's it going to be? Fight me, or help to save Konoha? Hiruzen asked slyly. We'll deal with you then go save Konoha, Naruto snapped as he bites his finger, and slams his bloodied thumb to the ground inside of the office, and called out, Kacheyose no Jutsu, and Naruto's party wisely immediately jumped to his location. Kakashi if for no other reason than remembering Jiraiya telling him that he planned to teach Naruto sage arts including summoning the boss toad. The massive amount of chakra he used destroyed the barrier Hiruzen had placed on the building, and summoned his gigantic toad ally who appeared in a puff of smoke with Naruto, Shizune, Tsunade, and Kakashi on his head. Hiruzen now on the ground outside stumbling to stand, but relatively unhurt. Now what Gaki? The boss toad asked annoyed. Serutobi Hiruzen is a traitor to the leaf and must be dealt with, Naruto rage, but the little bit of red chakra that began emanating from him was immediately gone once he had destroyed the top of the building. Stop summoning me to situations like this, next time you do, your ass is grass, clear? Crystal sir, Naruto yelped, good, now everyone hold tight. This is going to get bumpy, he warned before he leapt skyward toward the barrier where Maida Guy was facing off against Orochimaru, Shodem, and Naidame. It would take at least 10 minutes to get through the massive village, even at top speed which Bunta could not do without dislodging his passengers despite them using chakra to stay in place. He only shook his head, and continued forward with his hand held firmly on his tanto adorning his waist. Hiruzen raced toward the barrier before he was stopped by a group of ten genin who had worked as a team to subdue Sabaku no Gara and his sibling already, but now stood face to face with all ten of them with looks of disdain and anger on their faces. The eleventh member of their team stepped back as he did not know how Hayuga Hiyashi would take his actions, and Hayuga Hinata ignored his warnings and ran off with her mass team as she had decided not to let anyone hurt Naruto any further. They had all come to know and at least have a grudging respect for Naruto as his tri-solid cage Bushin stood in his place at the tournament, 
and led them to victory against Konoha's enemies and other competitors. Not even waiting for them to question him, he did a few quick hand seals and called out, Shikyu Rarisu. Shikyu Dragon Barreto. Earth Release. Earth Dragon Bullet. And a dragon's head created from the mud directly in front of him, and opened its mouth to reveal a white hot glow which then fired. The ten children would have been incinerated had it not been for the quick intervention of Midarashi Anko whose snakes pushed them out of the way. What the fuck is going on here? She screamed in exasperation. Seems our, Hokage, has been a bad boy and broken about seven of our Bill of Right laws concerning Naruto. We're just here to talk to the man, but he attacked us out of nowhere. Seems his guilt is all but assured, Sasuke said as he activated his Sharingan. I never should have promised Itachi you would be safe you ungrateful little brat. He should have let me kill you, he scoffed as he activated his three earth release, Cage Bushin to handle the assembled Genin and special Janin. He vanished in a shunshin, but while Anko could follow, she didn't want to leave the brats to their own devices. Plus Anbu had surrounded them as they are bound to the Hokage. Even Root joined in after taking Danzo to the hospital, and he was responsive enough to order them to assassinate Uzumaki Naruto and his traitorous cohorts. What they had not expected was the Naruto clone that was there to be so fast, as he took out three of the ten Anbu. Naru Shikamaru took advantage of the situation and caught the other members in his family's secret, cage main no jutsu, paralyzing them where they stood. Anko, Sasuke, Hanada, and Kiba devoured the Anbu with vicious taijutsu attacks while Uchiha Sasuke used his grand fireball jutsu on the clones before they had a chance to react and reform. Sasuke's trademarked, HN, was muttered as he planned how to torture the information about his brother Itachi out of Sarutobi Hiruzen. Naruto's clone was impressed by the teamwork and skill everyone showed. He bid his farewells before he dispelled and the knowledge of the clone returned to Naruto who was now at the barrier atop another building, having leapt past the fight two streets down. Inside the barrier surprisingly Orochimaru has allowed his sensei inside after Hiruzen called out, Time of the Ancients are upon us. No one knew what that meant, but Naruto somehow knew how to bypass the force field like barrier, and performed the hand signs which allowed only him in. Guy had known about Naruto and his prisoner, but had never expected his backup to be said Genin, nor his aggressor to to be his Hokage. But the nightmare was only just beginning for Meta Guy. You're Kakashi's student Naruto. I'd recognize that orange jumpsuit from a mile away, he said weakly, then continued, I appreciate the thought, but this is no place for a Genin. Don't worry about me Guy sensei. If you know the Genin Kosuke, then have faith. I saw him in his last demonstration against the Jana nominees. I am at least as strong as he is, Naruto advised confidently. Orochimaru had activated the Naidame Hokage's Kinjutsu, the Kachiyose, Edo Tensai which summoned a third coffin. As it arose, a man stepped out with blonde hair, blue eyes, and a white jacket with the Japanese symbol for four on it. Naruto immediately tenses up as the man looks over at him. D. Dad? Naruto asked. Naruto? Yeah dad, it's me. Orochimaru brought you back to life to kill me, and Guy, Sensei. Hiruzen betrayed us, and we are at war against the snake with a civil war on the way it seems. To everyone's surprise Namikaze Minato sits down cross-legged, and stares at his son for a moment as his summoner says, Ah! Isn't this sweet? Orochimaru taunts then says, It's a fitting reunion for your end demon. I get a few hits off of the guy in the forest of death and he wants to kill me, can't a genin get a break? No, Orochimaru hissed, which made Naruto jump slightly, more out of nervous amusement than fear. He knew that he should be fearful as this snake too was one of the legendary Sanin. I was training with King Kai for my battle with Pycon in the other world dimensional tournament, but I guess I can postpone for a bit. Now who do I thrash first? He asked, completely forgetting that he is under the control of Orochimaru, or is he? Naruto yelled out, he kept my heritage from me. Aero Senin told me the truth about everything. And I have a sneaking suspicion that this Serutobi jackass was behind the village persecuting me as a demon instead of seeing me as its jailer and continued on explaining everything that had happened as Orochimaru was curious if only for his own amusement. Minato sat down on the roof silently for a moment then turned to Orochimaru and Hiruzen and asked, is what my son says true? Not that it really matters as you can do nothing about it. Yes, it's true Minato, Orochimaru admits as he forms a seal meant to paralyze Minato, and bring him completely under his control. Minato stiffens for the briefest of seconds, then stretches, yawns and shrugs. Impossible. Orochimaru explains as Minato threw his tri-pronged kanai at the rogue Sanin, and vanished in a yellow blur only to appear directly in front of Orochimaru and Hiruzen with the kanai in hand. Minato slashed downward in hopes of slicing his former friend in half without a second thought. 
Hiruzen moved barely in time to avoid being separated from any vital organs. Minato immediately kicked Orochimaru in the face, sending him back into the barrier his sound shinobi had created. The Shodem, and Naidame who were still under Orochimaru's control began to attack Minato with a full barrage of punches, kicks and powerful ninjutsu. Naruto, not being a complete idiot remembered he had some of those special beans, so he handed one to Guy, and told him it was more potent than a soldier pill and none of the side effects. Guy reluctantly took the bean, and quickly chewed it. His energy immediately returned, chakra skyrocketing, and all of his injuries healed within seconds and gives Naruto a nod of gratitude before warning him back. Guy called upon most of his power for one massive attack when he entered the horse stance, and his skin became red as he summoned his inner strength, Gate of Joy, Morning Peacock, and dashed forward and kicked the Shodem skyward with a kick that would normally kill most other shinobi. Once skyward, Guy leapt up in front of his opponent and began rapidly punching him faster and faster until the punch's speed had enough friction to be set ablaze, thus causing the, the physical damage to the Shodem to be enhanced by the fire. Naruto leapt into action too, but was stopped as his father jumped back to his side, and placed his hand out to stop him. What the hell dad, I'm able to stand against Orochimaru for now because I am a bit stronger than I was when I was alive which normally would not be so. I won't be able to fight him off forever however, and it looks as if you can handle yourself, but what about your friends outside of the barrier? He asked as he pushed Naruto down as twin snakes shot out from Orochimaru's arms. Minato sliced the snake's head off the right side, and kicked the left one back to its master's arm before he continued. It's not safe in Konoha right now. There are Suna Shinobi here. I can sense some of my old adversaries, and if they know of our connection, I might not be able to save watch over you and fight effectively. You are wearing Jiraiya, Sensei's Hidai ITE, which says you have been his student, which I like, or he passed away and left that to you. If so, summon Bunta and get the hell out of here. Tell him to reverse summon you out of here. Don't come back until Tsunade, Sama, or the new Hokage summons you, he warned as he leapt back forward performing a Rasengan against Hiruzen's now summoned Enma who was sent flying back across the roof, smashing into the barrier and knocked unconscious. Minato again leapt to his son's side. New Hokage, we can't leave Hiruzen in charge, and we are crossing into civil war. You are your mother's son, smart as can be on the battlefield, but kind of slow on the uptake of politics. You are right on all accounts, Naruto said quickly then rushed on. He introduced himself to me as my godfather on his deathbed after saving my life during a training session where we were attacked, and Naruto pointed to the west of them where Gamabunta was fighting the Anbu who had attacked him. Minato allowed a small smirk at his son being able to summon Gamabunta then said, grab as many of your friends you can too. You will have two minutes at most. Have Bunta reverse summon you to Mount Myoboku to train you all as a favor to me and give him this. He shouted as he took out a scroll from his overcoat. If your friends refuse stating they are genin and want to stay and fight, inform them that the order came directly from me. And take this as proof, he said as he handed his son his one of his tri-prong kanai before he continued, I know you don't know the full story but your mother and I love you very much, and I won't let you die so young. Stopped mid-sentence when a small part of the barrier was shattered by one word with two voices. Chidori. Naruto grinned, hugged his dad, and ran over to his sensei and teammate respectively, switching places with Anko, Tsunade, and Kuranai. Naruto. I will see you again son. Have faith, as for you Kakashi. I heard that you didn't do too well as a sensei with my boy, but you redeemed yourself in the end. You only get one second chance with me. Don't screw it up, said with an edge so sharp Kakashi nearly wet himself as he whimpered out a, yes sir, which made Naruto snicker a little despite circumstances. The barrier again began to close, and despite Sasuke wanting to get information about his brother, he heard the part about training, and decided that getting stronger would do for now. A recommendation from the fourth Hokage on special training should not be taken lightly, Sasuke concluded. Team 7 grabbed its final member from a sound attack as she was currently fighting them alone. Hayuga Hinata, Nara Shikamaru, Ten Ten, Rock Lee, thanks to help from Inazuka Kiba, and a Barabe Shino helping him from his hospital bed, Serutobi Konohamaru, and despite his objections having to face Naruto after losing to him, Hayuga Neji. Sakura Chan, you okay? Naruto asked concerned as Sasuke helped her up onto Gamabunta. Fine, but where are we going? Sakura asked the question everyone else was wondering. To a place my sensei told us to go to train to get strong enough that when we return, if we need to take Konoha back, we can do so in with a massive skill boost. You all will be at least Jonin level when we return, Kakashi advised. W. Wasn't your S. Sensei the Yandaimi? Hinata asked tentatively. Yes but he has been brought back to life by Orochimaru by a Kenjutsu, but Sensei can't stay in control for much longer. 
We will all die if Orochimaru gains full control of him, Kakashi warned. Wait just a sec. Kiba yelled out, starting everyone before he said, not that I am complaining Hanada, but how are you out of the hospital? She only blushed a little as she stared at Naruto who had sent a clone to her with a special being, leaving him at 30. Hayuga Hanabi and the Konohamaru Corps were taken with the rest of the children by Uruka and some of the other chunin to hide in the mountains far outside of Konoha leaving only this mighty team under the guardianship of Kakashi. By the time they arrived at Gamabunta's location, they had been able to finish off the Anbu as they were already exhausted from fighting him. Gamabunta however was barely able to stand using his tanto to balance himself. Naruto told him to open his mouth, and threw in a bean in hopes it would work. It helped some, allowing him to stand without his tanto's assistance. Then having listened to Minato's request, he explained, I would, but I don't have the chakra reserves. I know know what that bean was, and it would take a lot more to fully restore me. If you all can donate some of your chakra, it might make it possible for me to reverse summon us. But be warned, it is very disconcerting the first time. Reverse summon? Sasuke asked. Teleportation jutsu which will take us to my home, he said simply. Everyone offered chakra to him as they placed hands on his back until they felt faint except Naruto who had entered his mind scape which he now found eerily easier to accomplish. Alright you damn fox. I already know your game. Surrender the chakra or I die, thus you die. We don't have time for your games today, so please, please, please cooperate, Naruto pleaded. Next time you might want to start without the, you damn fox. The Kyubi exploded with rage as it sent his chakra to the child he considered a minor nuisance to his beauty sleep. Naruto then placed his hand on Gamabunta's back as he activated the reverse summon. Instead of a puff of smoke there was a blue aura, and everyone seemed to be frozen in place. As the earth beneath them rumbled violently. But then they vanished in a burst of blue and yellow light. When Kiba, his dog Akamaru who'd been hiding in his coat, Shino, and Neji opened their eyes, they are on an island beach where Neji notices a small house slightly east of their location. This is why I dislike teleportation jutsu. They have a tendency to go seriously wrong. Shino said from behind his high collared coat. No point in complaining. Let's see if we can find out where we are and find the others. I can't smell them, Kiba suggested, followed by an arf from Akamaru. They walked up to the house to see an old man, reading, Playboy Japan. Neji took one for the team and asked the old pervert, Excuse me, sir. Can you tell us where we are? We seem to have gotten lost. The bald old man looked up from his porn and lifts up his shades and said, I'm Mutant Roshi master of the turtle style martial arts and you are on my island of course before he lifted his book back up and placed his glasses back in plaque darkness overtook them as the night descended they were tired disoriented and unsure where they were the air was thin and the nausea was powerful but not overwhelming the room looked as if it was getting darker and darker but stopped at a point where stars could still be seen seen inside of a room naruto pondered as he continued to try to move two figures walk over to them one a young boy about 12, in sleeveless blue armor, and another who looked to be 25 to 30 at the oldest, Naruto noted as he tried to stand up. The aura coming off of these two were massively powerful, not chakra per se, but whatever it was it was enough to warrant caution. The man walked over and asked Naruto, Hanada, Kakashi, Rock Lee and Gamabunta as he offered his hand, um, who are you guys? I thought we had the hyperbolic chamber for another 8 months without interruption. As Rock Lee became conscious, he nearly screamed from devastation of the injuries he received from Gara in their match in conjunction with the heavy gravity of this large room. Naruto, while unable to stand still managed to crawl his way over to his trembling friend, and gave him a bean. It took a few seconds, but he calmed, and was even able to sit up which was more than could be said of Naruto, or Hinata. But Lee also noticed that there was something else. Something different after he ate that bean. But he would save that for a later time to discuss with Kakashi-sensei. Kakashi was somehow able to find the strength to stand, and grabbed his host's hand in a firm handshake. Hitaki Kakashi, and these students are under my care, he said naming them off one by one by first name only, while he looked around the room that looked to be made of clouds. Goku took a closer look at Naruto then drops his jaw and asked, are you a student of Master Roshi? That is the same uniform I wore when I studied with him? Goku bounced around joyously and scarily without much effort. Who's Master Roshi? Naruto asked oblivious to the fact his former master had been transported to this world before in his youth, then said, this training gear was left to me by my master Jiraiya before he passed. Gamabunta pushed his massive self up to full height and then looked down to Son Goku and said, I am Gamabunta. I am the contract summon of Uzumaki Naruto here in the jumpsuit. Are you related to Son Gohan by chance? 
Jiraiya mentioned being trained by him, and someone named, Mutin, Roshi before. Oh wow dad! It sounds like we've met some people who are loosely connected to Grandpa Gohan, Goku's son said excitedly. I, I'm sorry to disturb everyone, but I'm still stuck down here, and Naruto isn't doing much better, Hanada politely interrupted. She's so polite Gohan. Better not let Chi Chi meet her or she will try to set up an arranged marriage, Goku laughed. Dad. Hanada had the courtesy to blush slightly. Okay. This has all been interesting and all, but how did you get in here? No one should have been able to enter, even with the instant transmission technique, Goku asked kindly but firmly. Naruto who had not realized his clothes were weighted finally pushed himself up to a sitting position and addressed Goku, but being careful with his wording he said, I have a bit of a gift. It allows me to occasionally draw on more power than I normally have access to. When we needed to reverse summon from our world, the boss over there, pointing at Gamabunta, was almost out of juice, so we all gave him a little extra. But it seems I gave him a little too much and we ended up here, he said guiltily. Well, there's not really a way out of here for at least another six months. So you all will need to try to stay out of our way while we train. Our world is in danger, and we are facing off against a monstrosity that has already killed multiple friends of ours, and has even destroyed two continents. The only reason we are not dead already is because I was able to bluff him into giving us time to prepare for a tournament and settle this between us. He will still destroy the world if he wins, but at least for now everyone is safe until we finish our training, Goku said as he turned around to start back to his training. Then he turned back and explained, we will have to ration the food now as there is only enough for five to eat comfortably for a while. Which means you are going to have to shrink yourself toad spirit, Sama. Even in the heavy gravity Kakashi managed to bow on behalf of the others without falling over. As long as there is sake, I am okay with that, he said as Kakashi pulled out a scroll with the words Iwagakir sake. Gamabunta activated his jutsu to make himself smaller, but not to lose his strength to avoid being crushed by this room's gravity. We might get through this yet, Kakashi offhandedly commented. It had been two months since Kakashi and his students arrived, and thanks to a some sort of crystal ball, Goku was able to show everyone that their friends that had arrived were alright. Neji, Kiba, Akamaru, and Shino were with Master Roshi. Sasuke and Sakura had managed to end up with Vegeta and Trunks on the lookout. Trunks didn't much like Sasuke's arrogance, but Vegeta began training him in his boredom as he found Sasuke's stories of shinobi ism amusing. And his royal bloodline helped. Trunks had found in Sakura a new fangirl which Sasuke was ecstatic about, however, Trunks made his first fangirl train. A lot when she was not studying scrolls she had found with a Konoha emblem. Shikamaru was with Piccolo helping him devise strategies for defeating Cell while Piccolo whipped Konohamaru into shape with his version of multi-form as it was the only way to keep from killing another mini Gohan. Naruto, Hanada, Kakashi, and Gamabunta trained hard for those two months so that they could walk around and breath more easily. Hanada began using her Byakugan and tried to follow Goku and Gohan's movements which for a time seemed impossible. But little by little she was able to see their movements and whenever she could get a chance to speak to Gohan, she would give him technique tips. She admitted that power-wise, she could not compare, but having such a refined martial art technique as her main family style with her new alterations allowed her to teach Gohan a few things which he was soon able to use against his father. But Goku was still much the superior fighter, but was taken aback by how far Gohan had come, and he noticed a new style that migrated into their matches. Gohan in exchange started teaching Hinata how to summon her key. The chakra system's parent system. She noticed that the potent increase in power was almost instant, but hard to control. In this instant, she wished Uchiha Sasuke was there so that she could compare notes of his Sharingan and her Byakugan. As time went on a small trust was built between the two groups, everything was going well until Gohan. Goku screamed out as he took off to where he accidentally placed a bit too much power into his last Kamehameha wave which did serious damage to Gohan. Goku screamed out, Mr. Popo. Someone please get us out of here. Gohan needs help. To everyone else's surprise a midnight black fellow's face appeared in the sky and said, I'm sorry Goku, but there is no way to release you. Not now that more people are in there. It has disrupted the natural order of things. The chamber will never be the same. Even out here another chamber has appeared because of you all messing with the very fabric of time. For the record, I really hate Vegeta, and that Uchiha kid. But try to be strong. Have faith in Gohan. He is stronger than you know. You must find a way to hold on. Mr. Popo said sadly as his face disappeared. Hanada who had been studying minor medical ninjutsu in her spare time tried to heal Gohan, but was only able to heal the most superficial of the damages. If only we hadn't used all the sensu beans already, Goku cried out as tears fell from his eyes. Sensu beans? Naruto wondered. 
not wanting to surrender his beans to a potential future enemy. But what of a future ally? Naruto took a chance and tossed a bean Goku's way. Here, catch. Naruto yelled to Goku who caught it and after a brief examination fed it to Gohan. A few seconds later Gohan stood up good as new. After a few minutes of contemplation Goku called everyone over, and asked them to take a seat on the ground. All did except Kakashi who stood behind them reading his Ichi Ichi Paradise for the third time this month. To Naruto, you saved my son's life, I don't have anything to give you in return, but I will do my best to repay that very large debt, he said humbly as Naruto just waved it away as if it was nothing. And you young lady, catching Hinata's attention. I have noticed you teaching my son new techniques to use in his fighting which is quite impressive considering how much of a difference there is in your fighting power. However he has shown great improvement thanks to you. So I thank you. Then he looked to Kakashi and Gamabunta and said, I see you both take training these kids seriously and I applaud your efforts, but you both seem fairly limited in what you can pass on. As of now I would like to take all of you under our wing and train you. When Gohan received the Sensu Bean from Naruto, his heritage made him grow in power at an astonishing rate which I am sure he felt. Something we call Zenkai. It actually ended our training six months early thanks to that. He has surpassed me in power now. He is what I dub a Super Saiyajin level 2. I am sure you all noticed the change in hair color and such a while ago. That was level 1 and ascended, but he has reached the level far above even that. I believe he is more than a match for our enemy now, but he will still train during our time here, but I want to train you all as a thank you, Goku said with a respectful bow. Kakashi put his book away, and looked at Bunta who simply nodded. Kakashi smiled under his mask after seeing the determined looks on his students' faces, and said, We would be honored Goku. San. No excuse me. Goku. Sensei, and bowed in deference to his new teachers. The others stood and followed his example. Naruto. I noticed that you have a very fast healing property, but not super fast as if you had used a sensu bean, Gohan observed, then asked, Also, are you guys from a place called Konohagakure no Sato by chance? Everyone looked at Gohan as if he had grown a second head. How did you know that? Rock Lee asked suspiciously. Well, we used to have a place like that a few hundred years ago a few miles away from where we live. I read about it in my history books. Time travel. Troublesome, Kakashi said as he suddenly remembered his comrades back home including Shikaku who made that saying famous in Konoha. Naruto's heart contracted and his chest tightened at the thought of not being able to realize his dream of becoming Hokage of his village. Is there any way to get us back home? Naruto choked out. The Dragon Balls are a powerful artifact that might have been able to do it, but now that Kami has fused with Piccolo, and he refuses to become the guardian of the earth officially, that may not be possible, Gohan offered wisely. Maybe Trunks can give them a lift in his time machine? Goku asked. If he and Bulma can fix it, then maybe, Gohan replied contemplating. One request. Can we start with the flying please? Hinata asked without stumbling, or stuttering. Everyone only smiled as Goku nodded, and instructed Gohan to get everyone started. Everyone worked long and hard for the next month. Naruto refrained from using his cage bushin in his training until he knew how they would react to Ki versus Chakra. He could feel his muscles toning to a level of perfection he had never known. He also noticed the muscle tone on Hinata, and how it made her look more pronounced and even more elegant than she already did but he shook that thought from his head as he focused on his instructions. Kakashi had began utilizing his Sharingan, but only sparingly, just until he grasped the basic concepts and then he attempted a cage bushin of his own. He noticed how little strain there was on his body and reserves now as key, even in its most basic form seemed to quadruple what was possible with Chakra. He began to practice more and more with his clones. Goku and Gohan trained with that they called Mootli form and trained vigorously on their own while the Konoha group did their own training. Rock Lee walked over to Kakashi and asked to speak to him and Hinata alone for a moment. Goku shrugged when Kakashi looked up for permission from his sensei, feeling like a genin again. They walked for five minutes until Kakashi was fairly sure they were out of earshot of the others, and they all sat down cross-legged and Lee began to express his concern. I'm sorry to interrupt your training, but something has been bothering me for a while now, he admitted. I appreciate the fact that you feel you can come to us, but you and Naruto seem to be the closest out of us here. Fast friends I guess, why come to us, Kakashi wanted to know. Well, to be honest sir, when we first arrived, I was in the worst agony of my life. Naruto gave me a bean. What we now know as sensu beans, he explained, but something spectacular happened. I didn't say anything in case it was a fluke. I started to feel lighter, and even think clearer than I ever was able to before. Usually when I practiced opening the gates it feels as if I have to force them open. 
I eventually decided to try to perform one of the most basic of ninjutsu taught at the academy. Normally hand sign seals do nothing for me. I felt a pulse when I tried it. It failed mind you, but I had never been able to even feel that much. I have been practicing during my jogs, and have managed to accomplish a hench, and now even the standard clone jutsu. I didn't want to get too excited in case it is temporary. I was hoping you both would use your dojutsu to check me, to see what my chakra coils and even my new key system looks like. And if it looks healthy. Please, he pleaded humbly. Of. Of course Lee San. We're friends, Hanada said tentatively to which Rock Lee replied with a big, yosh. Kakashi didn't say a word. He just lifted his hite ite, and realized his sharingan was deactivated. For the first time he had to actively try to activate his sharingan. Fortunately it succeeded where that should have been impossible for a non-uchiha. He gave Lee a once over with his sharingan, as Hanada did with her by Kugan. After a few moments of being gawked at, a small blush on Hanada's face. Lee gets some interesting news after Hanada and Kakashi talked over the facts for a while. I'm no medical shinobi Lee, but if I'd have to hazard a guess, I'd say that being fixed you. Everything wrong with your chakra system. That said, you may now be more powerful than even Guy, Kakashi said before he caught himself. I'm sorry Lee. I didn't mean to bring him up, he said truthfully. It's alright sensei. Guy sensei's power of youth, and, will of fire, will not let him wear us down, Lee said surprisingly calm. Then yelled, guys. I can do ninjutsu. After Naruto verified what Lee said, he made a decision. One which he knew his shinobi sensei and boss would not like but now they had an additional potential powerhouse to take down the corrupt government of Konoha should they ever return home. Goku sensei? Gohan sensei? Naruto called as he walked over to them, interrupting their advanced training. This had better be good Naruto. Our training is to save our very world, Goku said with obvious anger in his eyes. This is very important. It may help us all, including you train at a massively increased speed. Do your multiform clones allow you to retain the knowledge and wisdom after they are defeated? An annoyed Goku only shakes his head, well, mine do. You have taught us so much, and even now we can defy gravity hundred of times more than a normal shinobi. Even our most powerful shinobi known as cages, I want to teach you my cage bushin no jutsu. It is sacred because of just how potentially dangerous it is. But you have earned my trust, and respect. This technique will help you to get stronger, faster, and better able to do fighting techniques. How do you think I picked up the basics of the Kamehameha wave so fast? I had a little help whenever you both were behind the cloud barrier, Naruto admitted. Then said, this cell guy you keep talking about sounds like a monster. If you are strong enough to crush him in a few easy hits, maybe you'd be willing to help us to become as strong as our potential allows us. I cannot allow the tyrant Danzo, or his old friend Hiruzen to stay in control of my village. It will come under martial law. A military state with only the barest of freedoms, Naruto said with an edge. Goku and Gohan looked to each other then smiled which confused Naruto. Goku then called out, Nimbus. A small cloud among the others in the room floated over to Goku. Goku then looked to Naruto and said, If you can step onto Nimbus without falling through, you have a deal. But be warned. Only those with a noble heart can do so, Goku explained. Naruto bowed to Goku and Gohan, then even to Nimbus as it was apparently alive. Then he stepped up onto Nimbus. He didn't fall through, but Nimbus was deciding whether the passenger inside of Naruto should count. In the end, Naruto stood proudly on Nimbus. Goku tossed Naruto his pole, and said, This is no ordinary pole. It's nearly unbreakable. Its magical properties will be revealed to you at a later time. We have a deal, he said as he grasped Naruto's hand in a firm handshake. That said, Naruto offered, Place your fingers like this, he demonstrated, and taught them how to bring their power levels down to a sharp edge which was needed to activate the stage 2 cage bushin. It would prevent them from being destroyed until after 10 hits rather than 1. After an hour of trial and error they could perform the jutsu as well as Hanada, and even Rock Lee. Naruto held back a tear at having been able to pass on such a large part of himself to his friends. Two months later, one day everyone practiced with Cage Bushin but Gamabunta who was content to work strictly on his speed solo as he lowered his threshold a little every day until his miniature size handled the gravity of the room without jutsu assistance. Multiple times Kayubi, or who Naruto now knew as Kurama tried to escape and go on a rampage, but Goku was able to stop him, and knocked him back. Eventually he mentally called on King Kai for help. King Kai instructed Goku, and thus Naruto in a way to purify Kurama's heart. Show the ancient fox spirit respect, and kindness like he has never known. The process worked which surprised Naruto and Kakashi to no end. 
The others now knew of Naruto's tenant from the incident with the Sandame, but still supported him. Kurama no longer tried to interfere with Naruto out of anger and vengeance, but still held a small amount of him for being a prisoner within, but was beginning to warm to the boy as he showed respect to him and stopped calling him, Damn Fox. Naruto fought with who he now called his guest occasionally, but more for for Naruto's training which Naruto started to realize. That, Damn Fox, was adding to his training by building up his mental defenses as well. Naruto noticed Hinata more and more each day, her now long hair tied in a bun. How she walked with more confidence. She had started to push her obvious crush on Naruto to the back of her mind as he asked her to help him with the more intricacies of the senjutsu training Gamabunta had imposed upon him. Naruto had done well in listening to what Hinata advised, but he found himself getting slightly jealous whenever Hinata would focus on Gohan and helping him as he trained. Hinata's eyes were opened quickly as she was not oblivious to Naruto's attitude, and even Gohan's shared state. She was loved by the two now 12-year-old boys. It rattled her to be the center of such affection, but she shook it off and confronted them both after she finished her personal training for the day. Naruto-kun, Gohan-sensei. I believe we need to talk, she said which left everyone else staring off into other directions attempting to find any cloud in the cloud-based setting. Gohan, Hanada and Naruto walked out of earshot before she continued, I am not blind. I noticed how you both seem to feel about me, and I am honored. Naruto. You I felt the same way for a long time, but you never noticed me. Gohan started paying attention to me, and then you took notice. I won't be that girl. And Gohan, I see how you try to slow Naruto's training down. I told him where he could improve even when he didn't ask. Naruto was held back by his teachers at the academy. They sabotaged him every step of the way. So is his friend, I will not tolerate the same thing here. His training improvement rate is amazing. You tried to harm the boy who saved your life by keeping him so far below you. For that you have earned my disdain. Not to say that I will be forever out of reach, but it must be earned. I spoke to Goku-sensei and he said we could stay in here another year to finish our training, so I am saying this once, and only once. I care about and respect you both in different ways despite some foolish actions Gohan, or some odd obliviousness Naruto, but I will be going back home to my time. I will save my clan from destruction from within, and I will have someone who loves me for me. Not just my strength, and fighting prowess. Gohan, if I were to somehow choose you, you would have to leave everything you know and love. You would have to say goodbye to family and never be able to see them again. Think long and hard about what you want before attempting to pursue me again, she advised with little warmth. Both Naruto and Gohan stared, slack-jawed as the Hyuga air confidently walked away. What they did not see was the small smile on her face. It had been nearly another year and the shinobi found that they had reached their limits. They couldn't get any stronger without destroying their chakra and parent key systems. While they were nowhere near as powerful as Gohan and Goku, they surpassed any power set ever seen in Konoha, or possibly the entirety of the shinobi world. Hanada was the first to test herself. She spared against Goku. To Goku's great surprise Hanada's technique was so refined that she was able to add large amounts of key to her palm strikes. Normally this would have done little damage to Goku, but that in conjunction with her improved Byakugan abilities, she was able to discern his key system. She entered into her family's traditional Juken stance which she hadn't for a very long time as she had invented a lot of her own techniques. She then said to Goku as he was only three feet away from her, you've entered into my divination. Goku being Goku was confused as Hinata then called out each strike, two palms, four palms, eight palms, sixteen palms, thirty-two palms, each strike called, and Goku blocking, confused as to what she was attempting as she continued, 64 palms, striking faster and faster than her power should have allowed, but she used the raw power of ki as she would have chakra to increase her speed, and power. She the continued, 128 palms, 254 palms, as Goku noticed his arms, even while in his highest form had went numb, and he was growing weaker used the last of his strength to leap back. He was unable to access his arms which meant no Kamehameha, his most prized attack, no energy blast, no way to achieve instant transmission, or solar flare. It took a few tries to knock his system back into whack, but to say he was impressed was an understatement. He would never underestimate Hyuga Hinata again. He called the match, and Hinata bowed and stepped back to where Naruto was. Good luck Naruto-kun, she said with a small smile. Naruto went to face off against Gohan in a sparing bout. Gohan won which hadn't surprised anyone. What had surprised everyone was that Naruto had been able to hold Gohan off at nearly full power for nearly 10 minutes before Naruto just ran out of power, even with the boosted help from his tenant. After Naruto fully recovered, the Konoha shinobi, 
and summon had a free for all to see who was the strongest out of their group as they all hit a few tricks such as Hinata's super, eight trigrams of the heavens fall, which nearly foiled Goku. When it was time to rank who was the best, Naruto took first place although Hinata gave him the most problems. She managed to destroy over a thousand of his mode 2 clones. The only reason he won is because he still had Kurama's assistance. The most improved of the shinobi was Hinata who had worked tirelessly to improve herself, speed and technique to prove to her family that no one should be treated the way she had, and she would abolish the cursed seal of the branch house if it killed her. But with her speed, she wondered if even the Yandaimi, or the Nadaim whose speeds were legendary respectively could keep up with her now. Not even Naruto, Lee, nor Kakashi could match her. Naruto was the strongest without question, second only to Hinata in speed unless Lee unleashed his gates, but refrained as unlocking them with key could likely destroy his body if more than five gates were opened, and his chances of staying a shinobi. Kakashi's fighting techniques were the most well-refined and balanced. Goku and Gohan had used Naruto's training method for a few days and noticed an immediate difference. Goku stated that Gohan had surely reached Super Saiyajin 3 after two months, but had to be stopped from powering up fully as he might blow up the hyperbolic time chamber, and the very world with it, thus a wasted effort to save it. Goku was now a very powerful Super Saiyajin 2. Goku's assessment of the Shinibi were all at a power level of over 1 million. So a Super Saiyajin level 1 in terms of raw power. They were beat up and tired, but they survived the training. Months later at the end of the two-year period, the doors to the chamber opened, and a bald guy in a suit almost identical to Naruto's pops his head into the door. Krillin, Gohan calls out, Go, Gohan, is that you, so tall now, you're a Super Saiyajin. Yup, Super Saiyajin level 2.5 I think dad said, he claimed bashfully as he rubs the back of his neck. A trait he picked up from Naruto after their rivalry seemed to come to an end. Well, time's up, time for the next group to head in soon, Mr. Popo prompted. Everyone cleaned themselves up and powered up to show everyone their change as they left the chamber. Neji, Kiba, and Shino had made it up with the help of Bulma after training with Master Roshi, and beating him without much hassle. They practiced against Krillin on the lookout after Bulma explained who they were and were able to keep up until he took to the sky. Piccolo had Konohamaru standing at attention, and much more well-disciplined than what he was a few weeks ago. Shikamaru looked happy to see everyone, but was still concerned at not seeing Ino or Choji anywhere. As Hinata and Naruto came out of the chamber, hands held with electric energy surrounding them, and a few red streaks now adorning Naruto's normally blonde hair, Neji could feel the raw power, and he was blown away, and his heart fully denied what his eyes and senses told him. Neji ni, Hinata greeted her cousin with ice lacing her words rather than self-doubt. You've changed Hinata-sama, he said as calmly as his emotions would allow. Then he demanded in the form of a request, show me this supposed new power you possess. Show me that Uzumaki-san was right, and that fate can be changed. But before he finished his last word, there was a crack in the ground and a small trail of lightning where she stood, and she was on the other side of the massive tower. She walked casually back and said, if I fight you now, even in sparing, I don't think I would be able to keep from doing major damage to you if not even killing you Niji -ni. After seeing her demonstration, he lowed his head and sweated profusely, and trembled. Fear enveloped him as the knowledge hit him that if she wanted revenge for what he did to her in the Chunin exams, if would not even be a fight anymore. It'd be a slaughter. Raise your head cousin, we are family, I forgive you, but do me proud by getting strong too. Do your best, she said with an eerily calm that nearly made Neji soil his pants. The only thing he managed was a, yes my lady, before slinking back and he prepared to meet up with his new sensei. Hanada, Naruto, Kakashi, and Lee looked east as they felt a presence. What is this we're feeling? Kakashi asked Goku. Ah good, you noticed it, sorry, forgot to tell you that you are now like human lie detectors for those with low level power levels, and that you can sense power levels. Whoops, haha, he said with a laugh then continued, that's our friend Tien, and he seems to be carrying more people wearing your headband things. A blonde girl, and a chubby kid, he said. Before anyone could warn him. From two miles out Choji yells, I'm not chubby. I'm big boned, said with such ferocity that even Vegeta flinched a bit, not that it was noticeable. Shikamaru almost cries out in joy, but instead covered it up with a, troublesome. Naruto ni, help me, Konohamaru clamored. You'll be okay Ododo-san. Just remember the new jutsu I taught you before I went to train with Jiraiya-sama. I'll see you soon. Everyone said their goodbyes as the next group went into train after Naruto and Sasuke share a few venomous insults and encouragement. 
Goku and his group go to the beach for a nice few days of earned vacation while waiting for the official start of the Cell Games. Else when, I've found it, I've finally found it, you may have won a small battle Monado, but now not only Konoha, but the world will be mine. A raspy female voice said as she swished her hips from side, her gorgeous bare legs grasped the attention of men and women alike. All the while she laughed to her maniacal heart's content. As Naruto saw the look on Sasuke's face after he felt the raw power emanating from Kakashi's group his Sharingan activated on reflex. He walked over to this teammate, who in turn met him halfway and asked the obvious question as he simultaneously saw Hinata's streak in his peripheral sight, what the hell did they do to you all in there? And why do you look a bit older? From what I understand from Gohan, Sensei is that we were in there for two years training while out here it was a week or so. As for your other question, when we first went in, the gravity was about five times that of what we are used to. So I'd recommend starting things off without any training weights, and add them little by little, Naruto advised. Sasuke hated having to listen to his teammate, but the results spoke volumes and he wouldn't stop his training short of becoming as strong as Naruto so that he could crush Itachi. Naruto then said, I know you saw me having used the cage bushin no jutsu as it is my signature move. After you get comfortable using ki, then start using the cage bushin. I'm sure your Sharingan has caught it enough to handle it. Also, teach it to Sakura. Don't teach it to the adults with you unless you are extremely sure they can be trusted. The cage bushin alternative is minus two pulses in the second crossed finger. It will serve you well. Just pay attention when one dispels. Also Goku, Sensei and I had a hard time finding that trust for months, but once we did, we all grew closer, and stronger than any of us thought possible, he advised sagely. Finally, he said as he pulled out five beans and handed them to Sasuke before he continued, save these for life or death situations. If you can, save them to return to me. But if you or Sakura gets hurt to the point of her near death, chew it up and eat it. It has massive medicinal capabilities. So much so that it fixed Rock Lee's inability to use jutsu. That last part stunned Sasuke into speechlessness which suited Naruto. Sasuke underestimated Lee due to his inability to use jutsu. How dangerous is he now that he can? As Naruto turned to walk away Sasuke remembered, Yodobi, he taunted carefully, not wanting piss off someone who made Itachi look like Konoha's version of the Care Bears. What is it Teme? Naruto asked with a mild annoyance, but that same goofy smile adorned his face. Sakura found some old shinobi scrolls. Genjutsu, medical jutsu, and even some taijutsu. The medical being the most prominent. Sakura asked me to give you all these scrolls in case I saw you first. Maybe Hinata or Sensei can utilize the ones she finished with. Naruto nodded then asked a devious question, so getting a little jealous now that Sakura has found a new subject to place all of her affections? Not a bit. I am surprised you aren't, he goaded, then said, but Trunks is like 19. She stood no chance, he laughed a bit. Then turned away for a second as he could see the impatient look the spiky haired, prince of all Saiyajins gave him a death glare with less intensity than, killer intent. Which Sasuke had to fight down a smirk. Arrogant he was, foolish he was not. I think my eyes are flowing more in a lavender direction, Naruto hinted in Hinata's direction since Sasuke hadn't seen them come out of the chamber. Sasuke gave his usual HN, with a hint of approval as he accepted a handshake from his friend and thanked him for the advice. Are you two done or should we let you finish your date first? Vegeta asked in his most annoyed voice. Sasuke who knew how to handle nobles simply said, Forgive my tardiness your majesty. I shall endeavor to remember how precious your time is, he pandered to the dethroned prince's ego. Sasuke walked off to train with Sakura who had been talking with Hinata. They then joined up with Trunks, Vegeta, Piccolo, Shikamaru, and Konohamaru. Mr. Popo walked over to the entering group and warned. The moment the door closes, the intense gravity will begin. It will double every six weeks you all are in there until it has reached its maximum level of 200 times gravity. When your friends arrived, they had been hit with four times our world's normal gravity and barely survived. Fortunately you only have to deal with two times Earth's gravity starting out. Also look after each other. Konohamaru gulped, and looked to his elder brother, Naruto who gave him a sad smile, but wanted Konohamaru to have a chance to protect his future claim to Hokage as well. Konohamaru had a choice. He knew he could die, but had chose to try to make his big brother proud and would not fail, he thought viciously. And Omake the group under what Naruto had dubbed Team Goku went to the beach for some well-deserved rest and relaxation. They were able to bring their power levels down to a point of low-level shinobi. They played volleyball, walked on the beach, and even took a leisurely flight out to meet Goku's wife Chichi, and Vegeta's unofficial girlfriend Bulma. Ten minutes later. And my son is two years older you son of a bitch. 
Chi-Chi said as she threw Goku clear across the wide yard in front of Bulma's family's company capsule corp. I'm sorry dear, he's the strongest out of all of us, Goku tried to explain. Impossible. He's just a little boy. My little boy, Chi-Chi whined while slamming Goku's head against the ground for a third time, then continued, and I bet it was you who messed up his chances to marry a princess. She seemed smart too. Gohan could have been a scholar like I wanted. Enough. Gohan called as he powered up to Super Saiyajin level 2, instantly, which shook the ground, and knocked everyone back a few feet. He immediately powered down with a look of apology to his father then said, Mom, I love you, but I am not a baby anymore. I will go to school, but I must be allowed to train as much as I study, if not I am moving away, and living in solitude. I am more than powerful enough to survive without this bickering in my life. I had to grow a lot, and my time with this broken family drama is over. You either love each other or you don't. Don't drag me into the middle of it. Then walked away leaving Goku with a slightly goofy grin and Chi Chi on the ground stunned. While Naruto, Hanada, and Gamabunta looked on mortified, Kakashi spoke with Bulma. So that is our situation. We need to get home which seems to have been more than a few years back, he explained. Well, the time machine can be built using trunks as a template. But fuel is near impossible to obtain. Even our eternal dragon couldn't duplicate it. But I suppose we could convert your natural energy into fuel if we found some way to contain it, the gears in her mind moved at supersonic speeds then said, if we are going to do this, we need to do it soon. The cell games begin in two days, she warned. Cell games arena the ground shakes slightly, inconceivable to most the slight vibrations, but cell did. He then felt a shock wave of energy that popped his eyes open immediately. He then smiled and said, this might be more entertaining than I thought. Giving the little fighters a chance to train may make this a true spectacle for me to show how truly inferior they are before I destroy this world. Else when Omake, stay with me Minato, she tempted with an honest heart. B. Dot but I can't. I love her too much, I will be all you need, all you want. You have seen my powers. You know what I can do, she pleaded desperately. I felt myself starting to fall for you which is something I could never do. I love another too much, he cursed as he realized what had slipped out. Who is she, she, roared, the only woman for me, I'm sorry, he said honestly when he had finally realized his name. He was Namikaze Minato, fiancé, to Uzumaki Kashina, and Jonan of the Hidden Leaf. He vanished from her underground cavern in a flash of yellow light. She then screamed, I would have made you a god, she roared wildly for a time, eventually her pain-filled tears lulled her to calm, she fell into a deep, deep sleep. The dark shadows her bedfellows, and the drops of water her lullaby only to be awakened by another Namikaze at a later date. One that she would not let escape her grasp so easily. Ten years later a cave nearly two continents away from where she last woke. Hello mistress. I have missed you so, a man's silver tongue courted this scorned woman. I am still not interested Orochimaru, but now I am not going to stand in your way when you do decide to take on Konoha as your own. For the next three years she searched long and hard for an artifact that was said to have been lost to the waters of the world. She looked up at her dear friend Orochimaru said, You have not failed me. You helped me to find this despite hiring all of these lecherous fools. Now watch my hands carefully and listen to what I say as you won't get a second demonstration. She summoned a casket from the very ground which contained the first mazukage. Orochimaru's mouth stood agape. It was rare someone could surprise him. He was given the jutsu and the instructions to the second Hokage's most secret technique second only to the cage Bushin. How did you come to hold such knowledge great one, he asked with his head bowed in respect. We all have our secrets, she said with a small wink. She then turned around and said to absent company, I've found it. I've finally found it, you may have won a small battle Minato, by escaping my grasp, but now not only Konoha, but the world will be mine. A raspy female voice said as she swished her hips from side, her gorgeous bare legs grasped the attention of men and women alike. All the while she laughed to her maniacal heart's content as she no longer cared about the onlookers, and simply smiled at what was to come. It had been six months inside of the chambers for Neji, Konohamaru, Ino, Choji, and the rest. Neji had impressed Vegeta by matching Sasuke attack for attack when the groups decided to spar together recently. His annoyed Sasuke to no end. What he didn't realize was that Sakura shared the secret of the first cage Bushin technique with Neji while withholding the second. The two had become rather close over the course of the time they spent together much to Trunks's delight, and Neji helped her on her techniques and speed in exchange for such a powerful tool as Ki allowed him a decent number of the clones without fear of death. Trunks was surprised and pleased at her improvements as well. 
Something else new was that the two chambers had an adjoining door which allowed up to two people from either side to visit without placing a one-way field preventing more from entering. The door restriction seemingly lifted, and the young teens, and preteen able to go between the rooms as they chose, but the Z fighters still unable to go more than two at a time. Trunks' training methods were kinder than Vegeta's, but brutal all the same. Krillin found that training with the kids proved more challenging than he thought as they started to catch up with him faster and faster each day. He didn't know their secret or how they had learned the multi-form, nor how their techniques refined so well. That was due in part to Neji tutoring the Konoha Nin at night for at least an hour. He demanded it after seeing how much the adults trained. Most wanted to ignore him, but they had started to respect him after defeating Sasuke in a skirmish, and not being stuck up afterward. Vegeta was too busy focusing on his and Trunks' training to care. While it was true that he was not necessarily close to most of them, he wanted to ensure that Konoha was protected, and to do some serious harm if need be when they returned should the need arise. Sasuke reluctantly accepted the help with these words of advice from Neji. You are strong Sasuke. You and I are no doubt the strongest out of our group here, however we are not as strong as the adults here. No matter how good we are, we need to push harder to become better. I have heard of your predicament. You want to become strong enough to kill the man who took your clan from you. Well, this is the most promising way. No one in Konoha was this powerful. Not even legends of the Sanin, or any of the Hokage with the exception of maybe the Yandaimi. Work with me here to become strong enough to protect our village, and I will try to convince them to teach us some energy techniques never seen in the Shinobi world. Powers that will make nightmares such as Itachi tremble before the might of Konoha before you sneak into his comfort zone, and take his very life while still protecting the village I love. Sasuke never really liked Neji, but he could see the cold hard determination in his eyes, and he liked that. Neji had earned his respect, so he stood a little taller and held his hand out. Neji took it in a firm handshake. After that Sasuke, and Neji had become acquaintances geared toward common goals which made them dangerous. Sakura and Ino noticed this and decided that they would not be left behind. Sakura had also been studying healing techniques with Ino from those scrolls they found. The scrolls were ancient, but still held powerful secrets from Asuna Shinobi known as Chiyo. Medical training, specialized jutsu training, ki training, and taijutsu training, the two kunyachi were a bit weaker than the shinobi of Konoha, but they were more diverse and could provide support in healing. Thanks to Trunks and Vegeta blasting each other to kingdom come, and back again, they were able to learn about the Saiyajin systems too and heal them accordingly. Luckily the systems only had a few minor differences than humans. Trunks had even less differences. After gaining the Konoha teen's trust, Trunks, Vegeta, Tien, Krillin, and Piccolo were offered the use of the cage Bushin technique. Vegeta refused, but studied it regardless as his pride did not delude his intelligence. Trunks, after seeing the transformation Sakura made in such a short time had a little trouble learning it, but once learned he managed to hit the ascended Saiyajin mark fairly quickly, and without all of the rage usually associated with bigger transformations. Tien and Krillin learned the technique and immediately tested them. Once they understood the secret underlying the technique, they bowed to the teens and as they now understood how potentially dangerous this technique could and would be in the hands of their enemies. Piccolo had a surprising reaction as he attempted the technique. Usually he hated using someone else's technique, but curiosity, and his warrior spirit got the better of him, and he attempted the technique. Once learned, he tried to dispel the clone via a punch to the stomach rather than a dispel jutsu. It bled, and said clone was pissed. A battle ensued, and the real Piccolo won, or so all thought. It was never confirmed which Piccolo actually won that battle. Either way, the clone had agreed to merge with Piccolo the way he and Nail did. To everyone's surprise, there was a monumental power increase, but Piccolo opted to save that technique for situations where he had no other option considering how dangerous it could be. One of the more notable changes in the groups of people were that of Krillin and Tien. Their strength became monstrous in comparison to anything Vegeta had thought a, mere, human capable of. Tien's third eye notwithstanding, he was considered a formidable martial artist in his own right. That said, they were not near ascended Saiyajin levels which pleased him in his delusion of Saiyajin superiority. One day Tien pulled Neji to the side as he was so impressed with the tutoring he knew the others had to be receiving as the style started to mesh slightly, all of which were surrounding Neji's family style, and his slightly newer original techniques. But not so much that it impeded their own individual styles. Neji. May I have a word? Tien asked with a respect Neji had come to know from his elder martial artist. Of course Tien Shen Han Sensei. What can I do for you sir? Sakura informed me that it was your idea to share the secret of the cage Bushin technique with us, he started. Yes. A technique created by our Naidame Hokage, the second leader of our village. 
a technique made famous however by Arbaka of an associate Naruto. Even now I would not want to try to battle him if he is using his Taju Cage Bushin. The numbers alone make them nearly unfathomable to an up-close specialist. We can make an impressive number and not pass out, but Naruto can create a small army of them, and should he want to, likely take a continent. That is the Naruto I felt before entering into this chamber. Before I lost to Naruto due to my arrogance in our last fight despite being the superior fighter, Neji admitted. Well, as my personal gift to you for personally teaching me something so fierce, I shall do the same. I want to teach you two moves. The first being the Solar Flare. It is a massive surge of bright light meant to blind your enemies temporarily. It is one of my creations, and I give this to you. You may share it with your friends that you have trained with in the chambers, but not with the ones I don't know and haven't trained with. I would recommend allowing Hinata-sama and Naruto to use the technique. Naruto is the one who gave Sasuke the okay to use the cage bushin, thus passing the technique on to all of you adults. And the lady Hinata has had many kidnap attempts since she is the princess and heir to the Hyuga clan, I request she be allowed anything I learn, he said surprised that he would do such a thing for his reviled cousin. Neji then began to realize that after his chat with his uncle Hiyashi, and seeing the power Hinata possessed, he found more respect for her. Tian rubbed his light beard as he contemplated the request. It took a few minutes before he replied and said, you may teach everyone you choose the solar flare. It would be dangerous for someone who has those special eyes that you and seem to have to face that move however. If it was used against you and you had your gift activated, you could be permanently blinded if you don't shut it down in time. The solar flare is to be used with great care. Neji nodded his understanding and awaited Tian to continue. Tian rubbed his hands together and then said, there are two more techniques I want to teach you rather than one. Your commitment to your family member has touched my heart, Tian thought out loud. I have wronged her many times over throughout the years, and she had a chance to pay me back a thousandfold before we stepped in here, but chose not to. Normally I would call that being weak, but having a sense of the power she obtained while training with your friends told me I was the weak one mentally, physically, and spiritually. I owe her my life, and allegiance, Neji warned. Tian now knew that this Hinata girl would likely learn anything he taught Neji. They went back to their respective training as it would take Tian a while to come to his decision about his secret techniques. Tian had considered one technique for one technique as he had only learned the cage bushin, however, the cage bushin increased his training speed and power to a level he never thought possible in a human. At the end of the day, he called Neji back over to him with his resolve set. I have come to trust you Neji and your judgment. That said, I will teach you four techniques. I ask that you use caution with whom you teach what to. Especially that Uchiha kid, he seems to have a chip on his shoulder. I trust him to do what is right as long as it gains him more power. He seems to be doing just fine learning under Vegeta where that is concerned, noted Tian. Neji gave a small smirk. The first technique is the easiest. You put your fingers in front of your face like this, to which Neji did not move. I don't care how powerful the technique is, or how helpful, you look ridiculous. I will not look like a fool, said with a touch of venom which had received a chuckle in reply. Tian knew that he had a lot of work to do, in the other training room. Get up you maggots! Piccolo screamed at Shikamaru and Konohamaru. He looked at Shikamaru and said, You all saw your friends come out of the chamber super strong, and you wanted to be trained to be strong too. Now you are too lazy to train to get the results. He yelled as he gabbed Shikamaru by the shirt and tossed him across the chamber. Shikamaru cursed under his breath, forgetting that the man he now knew as a Namekian had ears to put a hounds to shame. Piccolo looked at him with a scowl, and then finally said with surprising calm, Look kid. You have one of the most amazing minds I have ever come across. Not just on earth, but any planet. But that is not enough. I read the power levels of you and your friends a few days ago, and I am ashamed to say that my students are the weakest despite that technique the albino kid showed us, and Konohamaru can't seem to use it yet, he said deflated. He sat down on the ground in a contemplative state, and looked around the decorative free room, and let out a small grunt before he continued. Look Shikamaru. That Sakura girl had a power level of about 900 when she came to train. You just barely higher at 1100. Konohamaru at a surprising 150 for having little to no training. She is now at nearly 40,000. At least. Her strength is growing at a staggering rate. You however are barely at 8,000, he said with disappointment lacing every word. But it is my failure because I took you on as a student. I thought that since I could train one student so well, that I was a natural, Piccolo said. Well damn. This is troublesome, Shikamaru said with a small smirk before he looked over to Konohamaru, and said, Hey little man, I think it's time we gave a little show, which made Konohamaru flip up off of the ground where Piccolo thought he was unconscious from his last attack. You little brats, Piccolo noted as Konohamaru said, 
You mean it's Shika, ni? Finally? Yeah yeah, and cut out that Shika crap, Shikamaru complained at the nickname his, little brother, had adopted for him. What are you two slime lizards babbling about, Piccolo asked, finally getting annoyed. HMPH. Watch this, was the Shikamaru and Konohamaru had given him before they entered into what they knew as the horse stance. Konohamaru and Shikamaru were soon surrounded by white energy which flared up around them. Piccolo had blinked dumbly as he established a base power for them both. Konohamaru was 60,000, and Shikamaru's power was closer to 125,000. Shikamaru placed his hands together and formed a seal which, with staggering speed led a shadow over the cloud-like floor to Piccolo who jumped away to the right, but was not fast enough as he only put for about 40% his speed. As he was caught off guard, something that hadn't happened often, he was now caught in tangible shadows and bound. Piccolo was disappointed that the shadow user hadn't listened when he said that it was an inventive technique, but useless against more powerful opponents such as himself. He could however not figure out why Shikamaru had that ridiculous smirk on his face so he decided not to do anything, and see what the young genius planned. Shikamaru then said, Cage main no jutsu, key bind successful. Konohamaru surprised Piccolo by knowing having just performed the, the cage bushin no jutsu, but it did him no good unless his body could withstand the pressure of the chamber. The chamber's increasing weight placed a lot of stress on Konohamaru, and he only pushed forward that much harder. Now he used the gravity to his advantage. Konohamaru used all of his available ki to fly above Piccolo but used Cage Bushin to throw him higher up and released his body to fall straight toward him. The gravity of the room in conjunction with the endurance training from Piccolo allowed for this use of conditions. Konohamaru fell at speeds reaching Mach 1. Piccolo decided to end their demonstration. He stood and stretched the bonds slightly, but they did not budge. He tried harder, and harder and surprisingly struggled. He then opted to try another route, and shouted, ah, as he summoned forth his massive energy reserves to break free, but found he couldn't and that his key was actually weakening. He fell to his knees unable to support them. At the last possible second Konohamaru pulled up, barely missed Piccolo and Shikamaru called out, Kai, to release his technique. What in the name of Purunga was that? And how did such a move drain me of my strength? Piccolo asked as Konohamaru and Shikamaru helped him over to his personal area. We're shinobi. We deal in sub. Subter. What was that word again Nisan? Subterfuge lil man, he laughed, then looked at his current sensei, and said, my former sensei Asuma started trying to push something about the will of fire. I didn't quite understand it, but I was starting to understand him little by little via the games of shobi we played, and the training sessions. He even asked my team and I about what the will of fire meant to us, and who the king was. I always thought he meant the king was our hokage, but being around his nephew, I came to realize he meant the children of Konoha. Piccolo nodded his understanding. You all may not be Konoha Nin, but I can sense that same yearning for justice from all of you. Even that blow hard Vegeta despite his insane temper. In the other chamber Vegeta released a massive sneeze, looked around, then looked over to the other chamber's door, and said, that damn Nara brat again. And to answer your question, Shikamaru offered, my family's secret technique with a key twist. I figured out a way to drain key, and transfer it to myself. It also gets stronger the more you struggle and the more key you put into it, he explained as he sat in front of his sensei cross-legged. Okay. You two are doing well, but what about Shino, Kiba and Akamaru? I tried to train Kiba without his dog and nearly killed the dog in the training, he said sadly. And those over 90% of Shino's bugs died. I normally wouldn't care, but they were literally crushed by the gravity of this room. Don't worry about them Piccolo, sensei. Kiva has been working with Akamaru non-stop so he can stand up to the pressures in the chambers. Also Kiva has been able to transfer Ki to Akamaru which is helping him to develop a defense against the massive effects. Akamaru has been walking for the last few weeks. Kiva has been keeping it from you as we did so that we could surprise you with our progress. Shino has created a Ki shell which has allowed his Kikai bugs to utilize Ki, and Chakra. He has also has a rejuvenated hive since thankfully one of his three queens survived. And that is all due to, to your training. Piccolo was not one for emotions other than the occasional laugh or angry roar, but he turned around so that the tear threatening to fall would not be seen. He hardened his resolve and turned back around and said, So it seems I was a little too easy on you maggots. And you managed to play me like a fiddle. The spiky haired lazy ass, and the brat with no real fighting potential. Well now the real training starts. Anything to say before I introduce you to my school of what my former student knows as hard knocks. Konohamaru stood shakily and said, I'm ready but don't think Shikamaru and I are the only ones who held back. Sakura and the rest of the older kids were taught this in their teams. Naruto-ni and Shika-ni taught me early as I didn't graduate from the academy yet. 
Hiding chakra is one of the base techniques for a shinobi. Shikamaru stood and said with a smirk, Don't let the fact that you might be a slight protege go to your head. There is always someone stronger. As for you, sensei, just try not to make this such a drag. To answer Shikamaru's challenge, Piccolo fired two red beams from his eyes. As the low powered beams struck Shikamaru, he was annoyed to find a wood log, despite the fact that there was absolutely no wood in the chamber. Damn Gaki. The capsule corp beached the sand cooling from the night air. Goku walked silently, followed by Gohan. Kakashi, Naruto, Hanada, Rock Lee, and Gamabunta. Sensei, Naruto called out quietly. Gohan, Goku, Gamabunta, and Kakashi all looked to Naruto. Sorry, I meant Kakashi, Sensei, his face reddened slightly. Can I talk to you for a moment, Kakashi Sensei? In private, he asked as he reluctantly released Hanada's hand and received a small pout for his efforts, which elicited a small laugh from him. Kakashi shook his head and excused him and Naruto having remembered the look his sensei gave him. Minato's stern warning eached into his mind. Terrifying as it was seeing that look of disdain, and disapproval on his sensei's face, he decided not to tempt fate, and to try to better himself by being a better teacher, and even friend to Naruto. He was surprised at how much he had come to know and respect him. Once they reach about 200 feet away from the others Kakashi awaited Naruto's reason for stopping the caravan of warriors. Well, so here's the thing sensei, and don't freak out. I've been in contact with Kurama. The one you know as the QB no Yoko, he said, and noted the immediate look of a Jonin of Konoha rather than a friend, but he expected no less the moment he mentioned Kurama. He continued and said, During my training in the chamber, there were twelve times when Kurama could have escaped. The six times Goku sensei forced him back. Four times I fought him back mentally, he just seemed to get bored and go back into his containment. The one time my father's chakra showed up in me and helped me to defeat him internally, and a few days before we exited the chamber I was able to meet my mother Kashina. She too had part of herself implanted in me. That all said, Kurama's cage has been opened again even with the new seals. He just pulls it off and walks out, but with no malicious intent. I think my training has made him stronger than ever, Naruto said with an startling eerie calm. What are you saying Naruto? Kakashi asked as his hand started glowing. Powering up is not needed sensei. I believe Kurama and I are seeing eye to eye for the first time. He wants revenge on the masked man who took control of him on the day of my birth. He said that he has no ill will against the leaf itself, and would lend me his power to help defend the leaf, and to fight others if I need to as long as I agree to strive to stay strong. As that seems to make him stronger. The other conditions are I try to obliterate that masked man should we find him. That way the leaf is safe, and Kurama's power is used only for noble causes. And I think the only reason he keeps causing trouble with me is to test my strength, to make sure I am truly reaching my potential. Kakashi with his fist still glowing slightly let it die out, and pulled his hite ite up. Naruto knew what would happen if he looked into the man's crimson eye, and kept his head lowered. Naruto. It sounds to me like he might be trying to help you rather than take over your body, Kakashi said carefully, is there a way for me to speak with Q? I mean Kurama? Naruto nodded then said, Kurama said he will speak with you but if you try to use your Sharingan to control him, you will have made an enemy, and that is not something any of us want. Okay. I understand. Now what? Naruto looked into Kakashi's Sharingan, and said, Concentrate on Kurama, and I will lead the way. It took a few minutes for Kakashi to learn how to navigate the mind using the Sharingan. A new trait. He walked down the black corridors of Naruto's mind until he reached a wide open room where a golden gate, held, back Kurama. But the seal was on the ground shredded. The gate opened, and Kurama stood and walked out. Kakashi was terrified, but that did not stop him from stepping closer to the gargantuan nine-tailed beast. The last thing Kakashi expected this magnificent beast to do was to lay down in a submissive position and place out one giant claw, stopping just short of him to shake his hand and said, Good evening Hitaki Kakashi. I am Kurama. The one you know as the Kayubi no Yoko. It's nice to meet you. Kakashi fainted in Naruto's mind fell back into his own consciousness. Inside of Naruto's mind, Naruto smirked, and said, I told you Kakashi was a little bitch Kurama. Why did you say it was me who removed the seal exactly? Because I can't have anyone challenging my mental stability once I return to Konoha. We will help them here as they help to make us stronger than we could have ever dreamed. But then we find our way back home, and we end that bitch Hiruzen, and Orochimaru with our own hands. I just hope the village didn't get to finishing them before I get my hands around the old man's neck. When did little boy True Blue? Orange becomes such a little badass. The moment I found out the village I vowed to become Hokage of is infested with corruption and deceit. The council has failed our city, and it's up to me to save it. 
his voice laced with sadism that would make Anko proud. Lady Hinata was right when we found that multidimensional TV in the chambers. No more episodes of Arrow for you. Naruto laughed as he picked up Kakashi and carried him back to the others. Cell Games Arena. I've grown rather bored of waiting. Maybe I should have some fun in the meantime, Cell said as he sped off into the night sky to the closest above normal human power he could sense. Master Roshi. It had taken quite a while for the other Z fighters and shinobi to finish their training. The second group felt nearly invincible in their own minds, but knew better than to take their power with anything more than a grain of salt. All except Vegeta and Sasuke that is. The power levels they achieved, intoxicating. But how would they compare to the first group who returned from the mystic twin chambers? Capsule Core. Hanada had spoken to Gohan a few more times hoping that a friendship was possible as she made her decision to be with Naruto. Gohan didn't want to hear it. In his grief, indignation and anger he took off toward Cell to vent said frustrations, and Cell who in turn raced toward him in the dark cloudless sky the evening brought. Goku, along with the rest of his group immediately soared into action, quickly having tailed Gohan's erupting energy signature, but barely able to stay ten minutes behind him. While Goku could use his instant transmission, and his maximum Super Saiyajin 2 speed to cut through the air, he opted to go with the others, and observe from a distance. A chance to see just how much his son had grown in the last two years when finally allowed to let loose. That might have been a mistake. As Gohan and Cell appeared before each other, Gohan's hair was already transitioning from his original color to a golden blonde. He then said, We will begin. You and I if you are ready. Cell nods silently, surprised that anyone would show up early to face him, much less a child. Gohan turns towards Cell's arena and in a flash of white and blue friction disappeared in a burst of speed reminiscent of lightning, but much, much faster. Cell allows a grim smile as he now knew he had found his worthy opponent. Two groups honed in on Cell's position, but he was more interested in the young man who had just made the challenge. He drew all of his key together and released it as a speed burst which allowed him to arrive only three minutes after Gohan who was sitting on the ground, cross-legged. His eyes now fully green, and his hair a tint darker gold, and his hair spiked even further. As Cell landed on the cold wet ground of his arena, he noticed Gohan's eyes immediately open, and turn up from his head's bowed position. You should not have made me wait, Gohan conveyed in a voice bordering psychotic. His eyes darted back and forth noting the additional key signatures coming in fast. He stood as energy surged around him, not in the normal yellow aura, but as pure white waves of lightning pulsing around him, destroying bits of the ground as he walked. Cell had wisely decided to absorb Android 16 two days sooner as he was confronted by the noble Android, which Gohan had seen on television at Capsule Core. Gohan lost out on the girl he was falling for. And his control freak of a mother tried to hold him in a vice proverbial grip, or so he thought. Gohan stood up, walked over to Cell in the middle of the arena and gave a warning. His voice clipped, and concise with a controlled calm. I have very much reason to be in a very foul mood right now. But seeing as even now I don't want to have to take a life needlessly I offer you a choice. Cell allows a small arrogant smile to adorn his face as he asked, What pre, tell young Gohan is that, with his amusement barely contained. Gohan's muscles tensed as a snake would coil as preparing to strike, his gaze took on a more steely look. The ground began to shake. The cameras not at least a thousand feet away destroyed as the very small key bursted invisibly from Gohan. Cell felt the power surge and his eyes bulged slightly at the impossible power he felt. Gohan simply placed his hand out in friendship and said, Take my hand in friendship, and you may leave Earth never to return. But be warned. Any sign of deceit from you and I will kill you without a second thought. I recommend you take me up on my offer, friend. Cell jumped forward and struck Gohan's forehead. Gohan however merely tilted his head and caught a glimpse of what he assumed was a pad on his head. Gohan saw a trickle of blood from the organic android however and quickly realized what had happened. Gohan gripped Cell's forearm, thus his fist off of his head, and in one swift motion effortlessly tore off Cell's arm and proceeded to beat him with it. Cell growled out in pain, but jumped back in time, barely missing being struck by his own extremity. Cell had not expected such speed, power or brutality. Gohan held the arm up above him, and then with a quick burst of power obliterated it. Gohan knew Cell had Piccolo's regenerative properties so he was determined to make sure not a single cell was left of Cell. But soon after destroying Cell's arm, another quickly grew in its place. Gohan had planned to make this quick to avoid his friends and family getting hurt. His father along with all of the other Z fighters and shinobi arrive and stand in a row outside of the ring. Vegeta and Piccolo note that Cell is sweating profusely while Gohan's hair sways slightly back and forth in the cool night breeze. Piccolo stepped forward with the intent of intervening as he had no idea just how powerful Gohan had become yet. 
Gohan's brief glare held Piccolo stunned in his tracks. He looked to Shikamaru to see if it was he who bound him, it wasn't. Gohan's aura when flared was terrifying. Goku who had been landed first looked to Cell and asked, so I take it you underestimated my son? Cell merely growled. Don't get snippy with me, I have a gift for you since I believe in fair play. Everyone looked at Goku like a second head had sprout. Goku reached into his pouch, and tossed a sensu bean in Cell's direction. Naruto, Kakashi, Sakura, Sasuke, Hanada, Neji, Rock Lee, Tenten, Shino, Kiba, and Akamaru leapt into action. Naruto caught the bean, Hanada and Neji activated their, Baikugan, and began to strike at points they saw as weak spots if not actual Tenketsu on Cell as he attempted to grab the sensu bean. Kakashi created a triangle-shaped sword made of lightning and propelled himself forward in an attempt to decapitate Cell and to end this battle quickly, barely missing. Goku is confronted by Rock Lee, Akamaru and Kiba. All powered up, and blocking his path to trying to send another beam. Only stopping because their sensei said he had some odd quirks. Rock Lee had seen it up close. Goku's anger was apparent on his face, but he did not power up. He simply looked at the smirking faces of Piccolo, Tien, Krillin, Trunks and worst of all Vegeta who burst out laughing before he said, Kakarot you dumb fucking clown. Even your own students knew not to give the enemy a beam. I would love to fight an enemy powered up, but I made that mistake of letting Cell reach perfect form before I was ready, didn't you learn anything? Goku's scowl deepened because he knew his friends and rivals were right. Krillin placed his hand on Goku's shoulder signaling the, kids, to settle down, and said, Goku, your intentions are noble buddy, but sometimes a little stupid. Cell was infuriated. He brought his index and middle finger up and pointed upward. Twenty miniature versions of Cell arose from the ground which surrounded the arena. I was wondering when you'd call on your backup, Gohan taunted, ignoring the shocked look on Cell's face. Surrender now and your children might not have to grow up without a father. That is if I allow them to grow up at all. Gohan. Goku and Piccolo call out, having never thought it possible for the kind-hearted Gohan's voice to hold such venom and contempt. No, I'm sick and tired of assholes trying to take over our planet trying to blow it up, or otherwise trying to do it harm. I have had enough. No more mercy, Gohan said as he raced forward and kicked Cell's regrown arm right off of his body. No more fair treatment of those who would do others harm. He yelled as another kick went in for Cell's stomach, but one of what Krillin dubbed in the distance as Cell Jr. had taken the blow for his father. That pissed Gohan off even further. Cell jumped back, and allowed his children to be slaughtered while he took those precious seconds to regrow his lost limb. The Z fighters had been forced into battle as well by the Cell JRS. Naruto was giving the Cell JRs the most trouble because Naruto used his henge, transformation no jutsu, in conjunction with his clones so the enemy would sometimes fight amongst themselves and not even know it. Cell had finally had enough. Once he was cleared of action for a second he took to the sky, and placed his hands forward parallel, then pulled them back to the right side collecting energy as he began chanting, Kami Hami. Ha! and placed his hands forward and attempted to level the arena and all surrounding areas. Naruto caught this from the corner of his eyes and commanded, scatter, and hoped his voice carried the authority, desperation, and ferocity to have it carried out. Luckily it did although he didn't get a chance to see it as he was in a stance that Cell had taken and unhesitatingly called out, Kamehameha, as he launched his own energy wave back towards Cell. Gohan rushed to help Naruto, but froze mid-step and tumbled, grabbing his heart and unable to speak. Goku sped to his son's side, and pulled out his heart disease medicine as the same thing happened to him when he first encountered the heart disease. He plunged the needle into his now powered down son. The effect happened too fast. Goku looked to Krillin who had just noticed Gohan had fallen and asked, is Dent here yet? Krillin reached into his pocket for a sensu bean. No it might not be enough. Dent's healing beats the beans by leaps and bounds, now is he here yet? At Korin's, Krillin offered while he kept alert for enemy attacks. Goku lifted Gohan over his shoulder, and looked back at Cell and Naruto, then back at his son. There was no question. I will be back as soon as I can, he said as he placed his two fingers on his head before performing his, instant transmission, teleport technique. He vanished without without so much as a flicker. Kakashi joined Naruto in the Kamehameha. The ground beneath them already crumbling away. The others engaged in battle with the Cell Jr. Brigade. Yamcha who had trained for a while solo had not had the same extensive training as the others in the chambers, and thus was taken down relatively quickly. The now Android 16 infused cell made his cell JRs massively stronger than they would have been otherwise. Sasuke created a katana out of energy and was acting as a barrier to the three facing cell. 
There was suddenly a thunderous roar across the night sky, and lo and behold a young man and woman held hands. They looked around until they spotted their target and descended as he called out. You're late. Where the fuck have you two been? Over dramatizing his words, noticing the hands held as he kicked a cell junior back. Sorry we're late, Eno said, but Choji found this awesome barbecue place, and they serve his favorite brand of chips. Troublesome. It's great to see you guys. I missed you, but no time for a reunion as you can see. I don't know what you both are capable of outside of the brief demo at Capsule Corporation. Will you both trust me to lead you? You know it bro, Choji said as he dropped his bag of chips. Shikamaru smirked at that and then looked to Ino. Like you'd even have to ask dumbass, she stated before lightly smacking the back of his longer pine cone shaped head. He was surprised when Ino quickly healed him, it wasn't perfect but the pain was much less intense. He had flown with them slightly away from the battle long enough to explain the plan. Piccolo heard through the noise and gave a brief nod of pride before blowing a Cell Jr.'s head off with his special beam cannon. About time you got back here. Time to show this world what the second generation of Ino Shika Cho is all about right? One of the few non-henge cage bushin of Naruto said as he dodged a mini Kamehame by one of the enemies. You heard the man, Shoji called. Ino stepped to the front of the triangle-shaped trio as Shikamaru noticed that most of the Cell Jr. were making their way back toward the original. Looks like a good a time as any to give this a real world tryout, he called out, Baldi Sensei. Tricops. Continuous SF now. Despite being annoyed with being called those names, Shikamaru had set them up as a way to immediately get attention in a mass battle as he might have a way to give them a tactical advantage. Shikamaru summoned shades seconds ago and gave them to his team, and Naruto and the rest were informed by Shikamaru of the codewords so that they could protect themselves the moment the words were called. Tien, Krillin and Neji stepped forward along with Sakura, and Konohamaru placed their hands spread open in front of their faces and called out, Solar Flare, as all Z fighters and shinobi leapt back and covered their eyes save Naruto and Kakashi who continued firing their Kamehameha without a change of motion as they closed their eyes. Cell however was not stupid and knew to close his eyes too. Blinding light covered an area surrounding the next words that were heard were, Cage main no jutsu, key bind, successful. Everything went according to how Shikamaru planned. All of the Cell juniors were frozen in place with Sakura backing Shikamaru up with her chakra added to his and the Naruto Henge Cage Bushin revealed themselves and were released. Two clones remained after the rest dispelled to allow Naruto some of his key back for his fight against Cell whose power nearly overwhelmed those in direct conflict with him. The two Cage Bushin, Shadow Clones, stilled, and concentrated for a moment. They opened their eyes which were now outlined in a dark orange-brown, and wore red coats. Naruto who sensed two of his clones still active called out, Guys, I appreciate the help, but I could use a little more key at the moment. The Bushin looked at each other annoyed and one called back pissed, you should be nicer boss. Gamabunda sensei would be disappointed if he knew you were being so rude to the two people who might just give you the edge to stomp out this green fucking wart. Naruto thought he picked up a signal underneath the underneath. He pushed his arms forward a little more, putting everything he had into the beam which constantly closed in on him and his friends bit by terrifying bit. He nodded to the clone which noted a brief acknowledgement of understanding and stayed very still even in his struggle. Both Bushin vanished into puffs of smoke. Naruto felt a surge of information from his cage Bushin experienced. Then he felt an inner calm overtook him. Finally within those three seconds, he felt a surge of power like no other. His body trembled, and his own body took on the features of a his cage Bushin. The red cage-like jacket, and darkening of his eyes. Kakashi has passed out seconds ago, as did Neji. Naruto thought all was lost, but even he with the help of the Kiyubi no Yoko, Kurama's power nearly depleted and Cell still seemed to be going near full throttle. Once the natural key arrived, it allowed Naruto a massive boost in power, and flooded his wave with a pureness Cell could not handle. The wave began pushing him back further and further until Cell was enveloped and not even specks of dust remained. Naruto released his beam, and fell to the ground as Choji, Hanada, and Ino finished off the last of the Cell juniors. After a few moments Naruto stood up, and stretched. He had helped to save this world, timeline. Now it was time to go do the same for his own. Naruto turned to Hinata who looked to him, and began to run toward him, and him toward her. Sasuke appears in between them with his hand still blazing with electrically charged ki. The lightning-based sword swung around, and sliced Naruto's head clean off of his body, blood splattered everywhere. Naruto's body flipped across the ground soaking it in red. Sakura had not known Naruto that long outside of a few D-ranked missions, and the wave country assignment. So she did start to consider him a friend. His death brought a tear to her eyes. Sakura would not chance allowing her concentration to slip however, 
She was a kunoichi, a woman shinobi of Konoha, and couldn't let emotions cloud her judgment or ability to help. Shikamaru waved her rock Lee and Konohamaru off to help the civilians as six more cell juniors appeared from underground. He was about to do the same for Ino until he opted to keep her in reserve. Hanada, however, stopped cold. The calm, warming lavender that burned under Hanada's normally silky eyes were gone. She fell to her knees, and tears began to fall as she grabbed Naruto's now decapitated head and held it in her arms. Her Byakugan deactivated and tears enveloped her face as her screams flew through the air. Everyone stood there in shock, and then Vegeta walked up beside him. Sasuke removed his Hite ITE, and like Vegeta, a large, slightly curved M stood erect upon their foreheads. Hanada trembled. Her eyes flared, going from white to a black pupil, but not losing the veins which reappeared on her face. Then that black pupil became red, and three Tomo appeared inside of it. Sasuke's eyes had now taken on a star shape in place of the Tomo. Kakashi flashed in front of Sasuke, which blocked Hanada. His chest tightened at the sight of Sasuke's eyes as he gasped, the Mangekio Sharingan. Blood dripped from Hanada's eyes where tears once fell. She placed Naruto head down as if a piece of delicate porcelain and walked past Kakashi who could feel a killing intent that made Orochimaru's feel like a child's temper tantrum. Hanada did not care why. She walked closer and closer and stepped deliberately. Sasuke, smiled and said, so, Minato's son had a little bitch. Poetic as I could not have my revenge on Minato himself. This is almost as sweet. Neji stepped forward side by side with his cousin and asked, before we end your life, why did you kill Naruto-kun? And what have you done with Uchiha? Vegeta laughed his arrogant laugh and said, This boy did not have enough self control not to kill the brat in orange. However, he did have enough not to slaughter you all. I, however, have no such quandary. I would suggest you back up before I blow your fucking brains out, clowns. Sasuke turned to Vegeta and in a seductive female's voice said, Calm yourself, Majin Vegeta. The powers I have granted you are not yet fully bonded. Even now, I feel you fighting my control which is fine as long as you kill my enemies, you may have this illusion of autonomy. Then turned back to Hanada who stopped, but her hands glowing in eerie red continued as if about to have tea. Namikaze Minato betrayed me. I loved him, and he betrayed me for that red-headed whore Uzumaki Kashina. I would have made him a kami. A god among men. Fortunately I found another who loved me for me, flaws and all. The great sorcerer Bibidi. How did you get control of our friends? Shikamaru wisely asked. Be more polite to your future queen. It might save your life, she admonished. What a drag, he mumbled to which he received a death-like glare from her. I suppose your queen should be somewhat benevolent. I will tell you, it's quite simple really. Those with a great deal of hurt, or evil in their hearts can be manipulated like puppets on a string. I had them nearly from the beginning of this battle. That explains what you did. But who are you? Piccolo asked as he gathered energy while the Yamanaka used her mental abilities to hide the increase in power. You may call me Maleficent, queen of all that is, or will ever be. Hanada vanished in a puff of electrically charged smoke. She appeared behind Sasuke and placed her hand on top of his head and called out, Kai, and sent a pulse throughout his body in hopes of freeing him from this she devil. Hanada would not lose another of her comrades today. Even if it meant losing herself forever to the darkness that was beginning to envelop her. The M that adorned Sasuke's head faded, but immediately appeared on Hanada's. She screamed, and began to lash out at anyone close to her. Her first victim was Vegeta. She placed all of her energy into her Juken strikes. He powered maximum, which caught Vegeta off guard. He laid flat on his back and paralyzed. Humiliation mixed with anger steamed off of him in waves. She then attacked Neji, who was knocked back a hundred feet, but was still standing as he was not caught off guard, but still near incapacitated due to the surprising speed and power of her attack. Hanada was out of control. Goku appeared behind her and tried to knock her out with a chop to the neck. Unfortunately, that just focused her attacks on him. He powered up to Super Saiyajin level 2, and dodged most of her attacks as he learned the hard way what happened when the key system began to fail. A silhouette of a large dragon appeared and surrounded Vegeta then they disappeared during the fight as Goku and a possessed Hinata went blow for blow. Goku was contacted by King Kai and told of what was going on. When Goku arrived he was taken aback at how much stronger she had gotten within only three days. He also noticed that she was now anticipated his moves which made beating her much harder. He didn't worry about hurting her so much anymore as she seemed perfectly capable of handling herself. Hanada jumped back and screamed, My Naruto-kun. The M on her forehead broke apart, but did not leave her head. She then turned to Kakashi. Goku stopped, curious if she had regained control. I can't stop this madness for long. Kakashi-sensei, I'm sorry I wasn't strong enough to save Naruto-kun. 
she grunted out. Kakashi held back his own sweltering anger, and whatever the burning sensation in his Sharingan eye was, he simply nodded. Hanada then said, I won't hurt my comrades anymore. I am a shinobi of the village hidden in the leaves, and I will never go back on my word. Is my pride. The stumbled as she struggled to keep that minuscule bit of control she had gained, then continued. And dot and da. That I is my nin. Nindo. My shinobi way. She pulled out a kanai faster than the eye could see, infused it with ki, and slammed the blade into her heart. Her body fell to the ground as her blood began to mix with Naruto's. Her enhanced Baikugan, Sharingan deactivated, and the blood that dripped from her eyes became tears once more. Three days later. Capsule core. I'm sorry guys, but no can do. Gohan's fight with Cell caused an earthquake and destroyed the time machine. And it will take me about five years to scrounge up the parts to build it again. But the good thing is that in two years Den should have finished creating the new eternal dragon Shenron. He will be able to transport you back home, Bulma offered. Gohan had kept quiet as every time he looked to try to apologize for going off half cocked the shinobi want to attack him, and send off waves of killer intent towards him. But then his intelligence got the better of him and he said, what about a spaceship Bulma? We could ask Paranga to bring back our friends and send them home. And Paranga doesn't have the one year death rule either, not sure about that one. The killer intent immediately changed to confusion and small touches of hope. Piccolo spoke up next and said, Paranga is not in the best mood after someone used him to blow up a planet a few days ago. He has banned his use until he finds one worthy of his power. We have to try Mr. Piccolo, Gohan said hopeful and if we fail, we still have Dent here working on these Dragon Balls. So it was decided that Goku, Gohan, Piccolo, Kakashi, Neji, Sakura, and Rock Lee would go to Planet Namek in hopes of getting them home, and saving their friends. The rest would remain on Earth to train, and protect it from the dangers of Maleficent. Thanks for watch here.